It is a picture perfect afternoon for some NJCAA softball action here in Melbourne. Welcome to the Space Coast of Florida, everybody. Alongside Mike Parsons, I'm Jeff Radcliffe. Thanks for joining us for Titans softball as they take on their rivals in the Citrus Conference, Miami-Dade and the Sharks. And this has got a lot of implications right now, uh, Mike. Miami-Dade 15-18-1 in sixth place, Eastern Florida 16-16. Top five make the playoffs. You've got to win these games. Yeah, definitely. We couldn't ask for a better matchup today. You know, two teams fighting for that fifth place. Sixth place does get a play-in game, but nobody wants to play that game to get into the state tournament. So this is a big one. Let's talk about the aces that we're going to see, of course, on the first game of a doubleheader. We have both of those games for you here today. And for Eastern Florida, it – uh, make that for Miami-Dade. They got Karina Amarilla from La Plata, Argentina. Uh, 368 ERA. Had a no-hitter against Seminole State. Yeah, coming off a really good start. She throws, you know, 55-58. So we're going to see a couple really hard throwers today. Screwball, rise ball, curveball. So a really good pitcher coming off a really good start. We will see Hannah Strickland first, the 5'6 freshman out of Hazlitt, Texas, 13-4, 2.4 ERA, over 119 two, uh, innings pitch. She is the definition of an ace. Yeah, she really is. She's the number one starter for the Titans all year and uh, has really been good. 57-60, to 60, rise ball, curve balls are out pitch. That's her bread and butter. And then a screw ball. 93 strikeouts as well, so she can go right at them. See the introductions now. And yeah, the so Titans the, take the field here. Go ahead. Yeah, the Titans, you know, line up and, and uh, get them started. This is Kyla Leppin getting ready to go. The first baseman stepped in really nice and played well. Here's the catcher, Madison Ford. So some news to pass on. Unfortunate news is uh, Jenna Borky, the player that leads the team in batting average and runs in stolen bases. In fact, she's close to a record. Not going to be available here due to an injury. She's out of the lineup. And it's some time for somebody to step up in her place. Yeah, for sure. You know, uh, Jenna Borky's been the center fielder and the main mainstay of this lineup. And uh, unfortunately, an injury is going to sideline her. And so uh, J.C. Boykin will take over in right field. And uh, Mackenzie Jewell will move over to center. So the good news is next person up, and uh, that's J.C. Boykin today. Always a chance to make an impression to – uh, Shelby Pettick, now 29, I make that 30 years old, in her third season, Fort Lauderdale native. She was recruited by Ed Giannis to come to Eastern Florida as a player, opted to go to Presbyterian uh, anyway, was an assistant there before coming here. She actually has a player on the roster that she poached. And, uh, and Jenna Borky. <laughs> that would be Jenna Borky, <laughs> so we're not going to see her. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, Shelby Pettick was on campus, you know, as a player and uh, ends up coming back and, and leading the Titans now, so it's a really cool story. There's a look at Karina Amarilla. So you see the 60 walks, or 644 walks to 60 strikeouts. This is a team that, that's going to really rely on getting a lot of, uh, uh, taking a lot of pitches offensively, but also throwing a lot of them defensively. Yeah, for sure. You know, they're going to lean on Amarilla to have a really good game today. And uh, Miami Dade's game is, is make you throw a lot of pitches. And uh, they see a lot of pitches, they take a lot of pitches, and they get on base and they score runs. Don't blink. Those numbers for Hannah Strickland are <laughs> stellar. She is raring to go here as the Titans need two wins in this doubleheader to move up the standings in the Citrus Conference. Here's a look at Miami Dade's uh, lineup in this game. Kiana Kadina and Jemena Kunjiami are the two Peruvian uh, players that will start off the lineup. A very international flavored lineup for Miami Dade. Jaden Treader batting third. Ty Cervantes is the cleanup hitter. Uh, hitter. Gabriela Luce in five hole, followed by Jacina Hernandez, Alexis Ortega, and Dana Piri. And Maya Wall will round out the order. And here's our first look at Kiana Kadina. And she will take a strike. Kadina batting 279, six doubles, 11 RBIs, 24 runs scored, and 11 stolen bases. She's somebody you want to get on base early. Takes upstairs a ball. Home plate umpire uh, for this game is Fernando Vera. And Michael Finch will handle the bases, and then they'll switch as we go to the second half of the doubleheader. The 1 1. Chop left side, gobbled up by Davis on to first and not in time. And the Sharks have their first runner aboard here in an infield single. Yeah, good play there by Livy Davis, just couldn't quite turn it. So 
Uh, Davis is the shortstop. Shout in the center with her on the edges of the infield. Thyssen and Leppin. The catcher is Madison Ford. Campos, Jewel, and Boykin left to right across the outfield for Eastern Florida. And defense is one of the best in Region 8 this season. So even without Borky, that should stay, remain. Second best field percentage in the state to be factual about that. That's quite the... Uh, well, when you're starting a program, as, as Shelby did a couple of years ago, that's where you want to get to where you're, you're holding things down defensively and pitching, really all aspects. Runner goes, throw is not in time. So a stolen base for Kadena. She has now got 12 of them, and now she's in scoring position with no outs. One and one. To see a team that will run, wait for the Titans. Yeah. To come up. Take a look at the lead from Kadena. Really good jump. It was a good throw by Madison Ford. It just she just, just slid right late. in there. Just a little late. Kadena at second. Here's Kunjiami on the 2-1. Yes. Takes the bunt, takes the strike, and we're even two and two. Gotta love softball. Mike's picking up all the fun action. Just keeps you engaged. You're yep. a player. And sometimes you're sitting on a hot day and energy zaps, that keeps it going. 2-2 Two -two from Strickland. All righty, wheels and deals. Popped up on the infield, settling under is Livy Davis. She's got it for the first out of the inning. Kadena stays at second base. Good pitch there by Anna Strickland. Livy Davis already busy. That brings up Jaden Treader, the shortstop, 5-4 out of Sartell, Minnesota. 280 batting average leads the team in doubles with five. Also the RBI queen of the team, 25 of them. As of duck on the pond right now. Yeah. Picks upstairs. Ball one. Yeah. Up hitter Cervantes is on deck circle. Takes that one outside. Two and oh. Treader has a couple home runs as well. Wind Three going left to right. This is a hard place to hit a home run, but we have seen quite a few this season. Wind blowing out to the right today. Nine. So for a left-handed hitter, you really have to get a hold of it. Yeah. Strickland just missing here, so they're gonna have a quick conference. 3-0 to Treader. Players only one, that's always good to see. Right. Thank your pardon. Right handed batter and treader. Points the same. Pulling it to yeah. left is going to be more difficult. <laughs> Kadena holding it second. One away. Here's the 3 0 from Strickland and takes a strike. And ball four. So runners aboard here. First and second with one out. And now you've got the cleanup here, header to contend with. Yeah, Cervantes is one of their better hitters, especially lately. So six doubles, a couple home runs. So Conk out of Key West. 286, does have a home run. Five game hit streak, she's riding. Takes a strike from Strickland. Swing and a miss, right yeah. on 3-0. 
through it. And she's in a hole 0-2. That was that rise ball. So after a, a walk, she comes right back 0-2 here. Takes strike three. So ring her up for the first time for Hannah Strickland. Yeah, really nice pitch once again. Once she got ahead 0-2, it was basically whatever she wanted to throw. First strike out of this game, and now an out away from getting out of the inning with after allowing that leadoff hit. Gabriella Luz coming up now. Luz, the five hole hitter. Cortatiba, Brazil, and she takes that one opposite field, but foul. One on one on Luz, 5'7 sophomore. A bit hot, 8 of 27 in their last seven games. Leads the team in batting average at 340. Feisty player at the plate, and from the left side, so. With the wind blowing out that way today, as we mentioned, does not have a home run this year. Gobbled up at third by Thyssen in the first, and that is the inning. Well, there is one hit, two runners left on base, and after one half inning, no score between Miami Dade and Eastern Florida State College. Coach Pettick talking to the girls in between innings. As they get ready to come to bat now. And here's a look at that batting order here. Livy Davis will you usually lead off. She is doing that again. Thyssen in the two hole. Mackenzie Jewell third. Kyle Leppin is the cleanup hitter. Madison Ford, Ashley Corazzini into the lineup here this afternoon will bat six. Marissa Shout, Faith Campos, and then J.C. Boykin, who's giving that start in right field. She'll try to turn things over. Defensively for the Sharks. Catching Amaria is Gabriel Luz. Cervantes first. Kadena, Treder, Hernandez right to left across the infield. And same thing in the outfield. Maya Wall, Dana Piri, and Jimena Ku. Nijami is the left fielder. Yeah, and uh, Davis, Thyssen, and Jewel is top three. Really get things going for the Titans. Three of the better hitters on the lineup. Davis took over as the leadoff hitter about midseason, has really taken off. And she can take off from the base paths as well. <laughs> She's a wing caught stealing twice. If she get on, could be a, a green light. And has that pace to be able to turn it all the way to third to, and leg out those base hits and yeah. make them triple. She's got seven of them, and it's awful. That's impressive. Tied for sixth in the nation. She's really, really come on strong with that, too. She's been hitting triples. And then there's the lost start of getting hit by pitches. Yeah. Second in the state, <laughs> 21. That's the rough way to go, but it does get you on base. It definitely does, but that leaves a lot of bruises. Yeah. Don't want to take one on the chin. Here's Amaria's first pitch. So we lead off the bottom of the first. And Davis takes a strike. Out of Williston, Florida. Adding 402. Have some home run pop as well. Up the middle. Gloved by Kadena on the first. There's one away. 4-3. Good Davis backhand is retired. By, the, by the second baseman, a good backhand there. There's Made Brooke, the play in the speedy Libby. Brooke Thyssen, uh, the powerhouse from Claremont Eastridge. Some good players go through there, like Kaylee Novak, national teamer. Former UCF Knight. Won a lot of games there. <laughs> she will take a strike. Thyssen be going to Rollins next year. Really has a great arm at third base, and obviously a very good bat. Well, the future Tar riding a five-game hit streak. Goes upstairs, and she's down in the hole 0-2. She's 
she went chasing a little bit on that one. That ball just kept carrying something, out. Something looked good. <laughs> Pops that one up, out of play, It'll stay 0-2. Kenzie Jewell, the center fielder on deck. Some work to do here for Bison to work her way back into this count. To the Lidra Maria. Popped up, left side, tracking back is third baseman Jacina Hernandez. Sorry, make that the shortstop, Jordan Treader. And there are two away here in the bottom of the first. A good start early for Amarillo. Two up, two down, throwing a lot of strikes. Kenzie Jewell out of Coral Springs down there in Pompano Beach. Sits safely in seven of her last nine games, batting 381. Three home runs to go. With that, and she will get on base, hit by pitch. So a two out. Pass to first base, coming inside, glancing off the uh, right off they, the guard. Hard, yep. I guess that's the way you want to get hit if you're going to get hit. Hit there where you got the padding, <laughs> right? Absolutely. Now Kyle Leppin, the cleanup hitter, the first baseman out of Groveland, star at South Lake High School, right down the road from East Ridge. Takes that inside, ball one. She's taken over at first base early in the season and really taken off, becoming the four hitter. Shows a lot of power. It's a flair for the dramatic as well. Had a walk off home run against Florida Southwestern. And that was a shot that day. <laughs> that was not a cheap one. Well, never be forgotten around these nope. parts. <laughs> on foul ball, count evens up, ball and a strike. Here we go. 22 RBIs. A little two out rally here in the first. Maria, that one misses. And that will move Jewel over to second on the wild pitch. So self inflicted wound here for Amaria. That the hit by pitch, and now the. Yeah. She was cruising, and now all of a sudden she's got a runner at second and lepping up. Looking to switch places here with Jewel. Here's the 2 1. Upstairs misses 3 and 1. She looks like she's just really being careful here with, with Leppin, doesn't want to give up anything good. Needs to come in a little here. That one offered and it's out of play. Runs the count full, three and two. She's safely in three of her last four games. I read those game notes, Mike. <laughs> Swing and a miss, strike three, and that is the inning. Well, no hits and a runner left. And after one, 0-0 zero, zero between Miami-Dade and Eastern Florida. Build a successful career with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. You can choose from nearly 25 tracks in today's top job fields of business, healthcare, and computer technologies, with classes tailored to meet your needs on campus and online. A bright future awaits you with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. To learn more, visit easternflorida.edu slash go slash bachelors.
We go to the top half of the second here between the Sharks and Titans in this NJCAA Citrus Conference grudge match. It'll be Ortega, Peary, and Wall to hit uh, against Strickland here in this inning. And first pitch, sky to left and brought in by Faith Campos for the first out. One pitch, one out, like that. Yeah, definitely. Good way to start the second. And it's always good to get fly balls to Campos. She's been excellent out in left field this year for the Titans. There's Dana Peary. Full name Dana Chimina Piri Gallegos out of Her Her Hermosillo, Mexico. I like going Piri, that's nice yeah. and easy. <laughs> one and one. Piri down to 202 does have Jacina Hernandez, rather not Piri. Ground ball to Livy Davis makes the play. And quickly two out. Retired. Now here is Peary. They keep making the scorebook smaller and smaller. The fix, yeah, corrections. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What an you know, inning from out. Strickland. Yeah. Almost the minimum on the pitches. Fly to nine, ends it. Boykin makes the first place she gets a chance at. Out in right field, and a quick one-tooth reigning for the Titans. They go to the home half. Titans will bring up uh, five, six, and seven in the order. Madison Ford, Ashley Corazzini, Marissa Schout. Coach Pettick probably expressing the time to get the bats going. Yeah, you gotta like when your defense is there. Got a solid one, one of the best fielding percentage hitting uh, field percentage teams in the state behind you as a pitcher. That gives you confidence. It inspires something. Yeah, that leads to you know a four pitch inning where you just rely on the people to catch the ball, and before you know it, you're right back up to bat. Madison four to lead things off for the Titans from Vieira, Florida. Vera High. Right Melbourne, down the Florida. straight. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Get that right. You can hurt some exactly. feelings here if she's a bulldog. <laughs> Primary catcher on a four-game hit streak, batting 370. Really been playing well as the season goes on. <laughs> Holds off on that one. One and one. Kind of the opposite from what you see from a lot of freshmen. She's actually been playing better as the season goes on. A lot of them hit that wall in the freshman season and don't right. finish strong, but she's been really hit swinging. She goes. Yeah, you play a few more games. A lot of double headers. Learn to build that stamina. Two balls a strike here from Amaria. We're trying to get the party started here in the bottom of the second. That's a really good pitch there. Hard to take. Two balls, two strikes. Chopped to the left side, gobbled up by Hernandez, on to Cervantes, and it's a misplay. So advances on the error, and Ford is in there at second. That's how the scorebook rolls that one. Back number two, Ashley 
Yeah, really good play here by the third baseman to glove it right on the line, but the throw, eh, it's not horrible, but a couple bounces, and Ford takes advantage, makes her way to second. You call that a double? No, I think it's an E5. Yeah, okay. So, just on the, the second on the error. Yep. That brings up Corzini. Zaney, the designated player this afternoon out of Winter Springs, another good high school program back down the road in Seminole County. Batting 353. Sit safely in four of her last five. Yeah, she's really earned this start. She's come in in some big pinch hit rolls and, and really done a nice job for Coach Pettick and now finds herself in the starting lineup today. 5 2 freshman. And in a good spot with a runner in second. Good one. Moves yeah. the runner over. So fielder's choice. That moves Ford over to third. Now Marissa Shout. With one away. Shout out of Pembroke Pines, West Broward High. 295 hitter. Known for her defense. Plans to go to FIU next year to continue her education. Now we'll be a little chit chat here with our umpires. Yeah. I think they're kind of looking to see if maybe the ball hit her outside the box, but I didn't think it did. They called safe. It was just a good bump. Just dead and dead. And Ford, a runner at third. Out 13 RBIs coming in. And the notch out up to 14 here with one away. First Defense pitch. playing front. They're playing up a lot, so. I'll poke it through the opposite field here. Gives her a little more room between the infield and outfield to dump one. Check the plate here, one away. <laughs> Won't chase that. Ball one. Good 0 2 pitch, though, to see if she's anxious and wants to take the swing. But like you said, a couple aces, it's always good to see somebody on base. They lock right in, and before you know it, it's 0 2. Two to shout. Not a piece of it, fouled it back. It will stay a ball of two strikes. No, don't fall, don't fall. This one up, will it stay in play? It will not, off the top of the dugout. And new life here for Marissa. Definitely making Amarillo work a little bit here. Putting together a good, good at bat. Ball two. Gonna make something after this at bat. Just one away. On deck is Faith Campos. Thing, don't even really need a base hit. Just make sure you get put a deep play, fly huh? ball and put it in play somewhere, and you can probably score the run. Ah, we'll have to hold. It's runner checked. Going to run Just anyway. Gonna Ford is safe, and the Titans lead one nothing. Fielder's choice. Shout the RBI. Yeah, and that's really been 
a big key for the Titans is they're aggressive. They they make sure they run the base as well. And here's a sign of it is when your catcher waits until the throw goes and then she takes off for home. By the time the play's made at first, there's no play at home. Two away base is empty here for Faith Campos. Another Lake County product out of Lake Mineola. That is a hotbed of high school softball, that area. Batting 350, she started every game in the outfield this year. Known for that defense. But safely though, five in the last eight. She's hit kind of all over the lineup, but sophomore playing her second season here with Eastern Florida and really has blossomed this season into a great player. Home run and 14 RBIs to go with that 350 average. It's a threat to steal if she gets on. She's got 34 of them. Here's the 2 Chops it. Foul, it will stay, ball two strikes. Wasting some pitches here from Amaria. Yeah, the bottom of the lineup's really making Amaria work a lot here. That pays off a couple innings down the road. And the 2 As many pitches as you can. That one, she won't chase. Ball two strikes. That's funny, at the top we talked about Miami Dade being the team that taking a lot of pitches and making right. pitchers work, and then so far it's been the Titans doing that. Turnabout is fair play. <laughs> They've seen the scouting report and they're like, we can do that too. Yeah. <laughs> Campos Any, follows another one off. Yeah. Anything you can do, I can do better. <laughs> Extending this at bat. Upstairs, ball two. Two and two. Worked herself into a pretty good hitter's count now. Not much room left. And she's seen everything that Amarillo throws now. Got that timing down. Time for an off speed. Up the middle. What a catch by Katina. Wow. To end the inning, laid out completely to Rob Faith Campos. There was one run on the error. And after two innings of play, Titans being held to a one nothing lead. My name is Kenny Neff, and I am enrolled in the Eastern Florida State College welding program. The cost of it actually surprised me on how it wasn't nearly what I thought it would be. My instructors are probably the best instructor I could probably ask for. Your total welding throughout the day, you're probably welding four hours, five hours. When the weekend comes, I'm waiting for Monday to come back around because I love welding, just being in there, hands on, just constantly burning rods. Third here as we hit the bottom of the order for the Sharks, trailing one nothing. Third inning work for Strickland. It'll be ball one on Maya Wall. Maya out of Miami's Robert Morgan Educational. Been struggling at the plate recently, two for her last 20, hence her position in the lineup. But 
turn that over. Set up the top of the order after this. Sophomore. Last inning, it was a four pitch inning for Strickland. And three fly outs. And now Maya Wall has seen four pitches. So <laughs> Not going to get a repeat this time. I'm sure that uh, Coach Gina De Guero said, let's show a little more patience. I'm sure, time. yeah. I'm sure that was said after that last inning is we have to be more, more patient and see some more pitches. Good pitch there. Buckled her a little bit. Now it's two and two. <laughs> Count runs okay. full, three and two. Three more, two, three. As a team, Sharks batting 246. Compare that to the Titans who are batting 362. I mean, over 120 points better. Yeah. But just finding a way and dropping that in, Maya Wall, who's batting 164, starts the inning off. That's, so that brings up Kadena, who ended that last inning with this great diving catch. I mean, look Ooh. at that. Full extension in the hole right behind second base. That's a great play. Now a chance to do damage at the plate. Singled and stole a base, was stranded in the end in that first inning. So that bat for the Peruvian. Six of 13 in the last four, riding a four game hit streak. Runner at first is Wall. Laying down the bunt foul ball. Quickly in the hole, Kadena, 0-2. The 0-2 from Strickland. Try to get her to chase something inside, not offering. a hold of it, but foul. Turned on that one pretty quick. Still one and two though. Let's see if Strickland goes to the curveball, if she goes rise ball here. Jams her by Thyssen. And Shouts got it for the put out. Second force out. Smart play by Thyssen to make sure she gets the lead runner. Keeps keeps things right at first. Well, the other native of Lima, Peru. Problem is Kadena already has one stolen base today and is a threat to run, so. There. She looked like she might have been going right there, actually. Kadena leads the team with 12 stolen bases. Not the gaudy numbers that the Titans have, but when the opportunity rises, they'll go. Kagami offering that, and foul it back, a ball and a strike. Yeah, and that really started last year with Pettick of having runners that really do steal bases and are aggressive on the base paths. You know, our baseball team we saw last week does kind of the same thing. Make the defense work. Side strike, painted that inside corner. Ball, two strikes here on Kunigami, who flied out to the infield. First at bat. Not a bad on it, puts it foul, stays one and two. Yeah, once again, really inside pitch by Strickland. Forced to do nothing but foul it off. Like 
Kadina Kunigami on a four game hit streak. That's good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and here on the top of the third, working in on Kunigami, the one two. Chase, nothing doing there. Count evening at two balls, two strikes. Two on two strike. And it hit him. Runners at first and second now. Pitch just rides in. Just catches her. Just barely got her there. Just inside pitch, just a little too far inside. Ah, gosh. I tell you what, I'm flinching there. Yeah. Uh, Kunigami just took it and take it. Yeah, she's still walking it off a little bit. She's. Jaden Trotter, or Trotter up now. Walked her first at <laughs> first at bat. Yep. Big spot with the three four uh, hitters cut coming up now. Two on. Just one away. Yeah. And falling behind the count one and zero. Oh. Just missed inside, and two balls and no strikes. That was a really close, very good pitch right there. Shredder, leading RBI player, again out of Sartell, Minnesota. 25 of them, and a big chance to add to her total here, one away. <laughs> big strike. Strickland needed that. Yeah, for sure. Like she might have taken a little bit off just to make sure that one was a strike. Trader swings, gloved by Thyssen over to first and in there's time. That defense. A double play. There's that defense that we talked about. Thyssen really had a good has had a good season at third base, and that was a great play there. And that gets the Titans out of the inning with no damage. Watch again here. How about the reaction? So quick. Jumps up, grabs the ball right to the base, over to Kyla. No yep. chance for Treader to get down the line. Five unassisted, over to three, the double play. And we go to the home half of the third. Titans fans have been pretty Pretty lucky to see Thyssen and a couple other sophomores this season. They've really played well defensively. Destiny Lake throwing in the bullpen for the Eastern Florida. Typically see her come on when? Usually late. She has a good mix of pitches that uh, matches well with both Walters and, and Strickland. So. She's getting warm just in case, I'm sure. Titans will start off this third inning with J.C. Boykin, the nine-hole hitter. Getting in the lineup tonight out of Valdosta, Georgia, 5'5 sophomore. Played a lot of games as a freshman, so no stranger to the starting lineup. Yeah. Seven outside a ball. Getting her opportunity today. Nice pitch right on the outside corner there. Not much Boykin was going to do with that. One and one on the lefty. That's right at third. Picked up by Hernandez on the first to get the put out. And there is one away. Really 
hard hit by Boykin just right at the third baseman. Brings the top of the out order, Libby Davis. Freshman shortstop. Grounded out in the first at bat. P sends it deep to left center and tracking it is Peary for out number two. Yeah, gave that one a good ride. All the way to the morning track. Oh, as you said, tough to hit a ball out here. Yeah, especially with this wind. She gave it a ride for sure. She close, just about to the warning track. Good run down by the center fielder, Peary. Tyson, wide out to shortstop. First at bat, this time through that hole at the shortstop side and has a two out single. I would guess she's definitely gonna test lose. She's another one that runs well, runs quite a lot. Six game hit streak now for Tyson. She has 17 stolen bases, so. Kenzie Jewell, the hitter here with two away. Bullpen ball went into the field. <laughs> the middle base hit. Didn't need a steal. Hustling for third. Thyssen will come around and score the run, it's 2-0. RBI double for Mackenzie Jewell. That one just kept going all the way to the wall. By Mackenzie Jewell. Back to back, two out hits. Her 14th double of the season. Two away, now Leppin will step in. Another runner in scoring position here. That second time through the order, you got a bit of an idea what's coming. Foul yeah, that one out, look. <laughs> look out, Madison. You can definitely tell the Titan bats are a little more aggressive this inning. Third, the play for Hernandez again, 5-3 on the put out, but run scores on two hits, runner left, and the Titans have extended the lead 2-0 as we go to the top of the fourth. Just really good swing there by Mackenzie Jewell. And then once she sees it goes all the way to the wall, she just keeps her eye on motor and yeah, Thyssen I'm, wasn't stopping. I was going to say, I'm not sure Thyssen was stopping either way. <laughs> Blow through that stop sign and then it was there. She rounded third and she was just going to keep Ryan going. So just chipping away a run here in the last two innings. 2-0 two lead now for Strickland. Yeah, slowly expand that lead. Play some defense. Approaching the midway point of this one. Again, reminder, a programming note, we will show both halves of this doubleheader today. It'll take a, a 20, 25 minute break in between matches. Brings you in games. Yeah, definitely. So we'll get to see both ends of a very critical, critical series for both teams, actually. So we just have a couple more weeks of the regular season. Talked about those standings. Eastern Florida in fifth, 16 and 16. Miami Dade 15, 18 and one, just behind them. You want to stay in that top five. Yeah. A little tough to catch fourth place Santa Fe there on 22 wins. Yeah. I don't think that's happening, but if you can solidify your spot. 
definitely one of those things, just like they always say about the postseason, just get in and see what happens. Yeah. Cervantes is second at bat. Struck out looking in the first. Turn on it, it will drop in for a base hit. So a leadoff single here for Cervantes. Yeah, she couldn't have placed that one much better. Put that right next to the line. Easy single. So not about how hard you hit it, it's the placement. It's an art form to that. On the left side, it brings up Gabriela Luz. <laughs> Here's the catcher. Grounded out to third, her first at bat. This time she's got a runner on base though with no out. It's a swing. And then she's in the hole 0 and 2 to Anna Strickland. So spotted a two run lead here. Yeah, really good. First two pitches from Strickland to get ahead here. Strickland trying to get her 14th win of the season here this afternoon. Fouled off again, stays 0-2. As we said in the first inning, lose a bit of a hot hitter as of late. Yeah, she's really earned herself yep. into a starting role as the catcher right. here. 340 leads the team in batting average from the catcher spot. Yeah, you'll take that. Yeah. to Cervantes. Squaring a bunt here. Pulls it back, takes a swing. Will drop for a base hit. Keeping it in front is Campos. And out at second. There's that defense once again. Right. So Cervantes had to hold up just enough to make sure it wasn't caught. It's one of those darned if you do, darned if you don't. Yeah, it really is. And with Campos' arm, as soon as she got up and through, it was Close play, but he got her. So that erases the lead runner. Still a runner on here as we get to Jacina Hernandez. Back in the second, slide out to the field. Takes a strike. from Strickland. They're swinging the bats now on Strickland. Yeah, for sure. Play. Throwing a lot of strikes, but also they're starting to see it a little bit, hitting a little bit more. But the play by Campos, you know, that's the kind of things that you don't really see in the box score, but that changes the whole inning. Right. And it changes, you know, the whole thing for Strickland. Because now instead of first and second, nobody out. She just has first and one out. And here she is 0-2. Ball two strikes. One away runner at first is Luz. Upstairs. Two and two. Out for Strickland. Two away. So he, he called the warning just because she was right on top of the plate when on that strike. So he gave her a warning for that. So Alexis Ortega. Take a look again here. This was really tight to the plate. She really didn't move too much into the plate, so. 
Maybe maybe the gesture afterwards earned, earned her the uh, the warning. <laughs> right. <laughs> Quite possible. Either way, a really good pitch by uh, Strickland. Here. Yeah, for Ortega. Yeah. Right, first remains Gabriela Luz. Ortega fly it out to right, back in the second. Swung on right at Shout with the put out to end the inning. Yeah, so really nice defense there. Gets out of what could have been a nice jam. Now we head to the bottom of the fourth, still leading two to zero. Couple of hits, one runner left. Still yet to score Miami Dade. Titans lead at two zero. Sharks have left five on base now. As we go to the bottom half of the fourth, it will be Ford, Corazzini, and Shout for the Titans. Take a look back at that force out. Yeah, and Just Campos almost makes the catch, not quite, but the reflexes are so, so quick. And well, good on Shout to be a second ready for that. What a gun. You certainly had the advantage of it. You had to just hesitate enough if you're the runner. Yeah, because you just don't know if she's going to make that catch. You don't want to get doubled off. What an arm. Just lasered it in a second. So the catcher comes up. Ford. <laughs> Scored the first run after Don't reaching on there. Yeah, after getting on the air, yep. Yeah. the second on that error. Get her on again. Crack at it, foul ball, one and one. Towards right field out of play. But a long run there for Maya Wall. Wind kind of carried it out of her range. Ball two strikes. The leadoff hitter, Madison Ford. It's a piece, but right at the left fielder, Jimena Kunigami. And Ford is retired. Even on the outs, just really making Emeria work a little bit. Here's Corazzini back up. Reeks on a fielder's choice, first time up in the second. That inning that played at the Titans' first run. Showed off her bunt skills in the first at bat. She'll get the swing away this time. Yeah. 
Good pitch by Amarillo. A little tempting. She went after it. <laughs> Corazini getting the start here today in the absence of Jenna Borky. Two balls and a strike. it up. Shallow center. Peary is under it and there's two away. A couple of fly ball outs here for Emma Ria in the fourth. Yeah and so far she's you know other than McKenzie's double she's kind of been unlucky that it's 2-0 right now. <clears throat> Shout comes up. Fielder's choice RBI first time up. She'll be retired quickly here. Oh. Flies out foul territory. And three up, three down for the Titans. They still lead this 2-0 as we go to the top of the fifth. The lab that EFSC Respiratory Program has is very up to date and had actually more stuff than some of the hospitals did. As a student here, you know, working with all that equipment definitely puts you at an advantage because when you are here for a semester and then you go out, you get to see it on real patients. The lab here is, I would say, above and beyond what you would need to see and what you need to know when you go out to your clinical sites. Back at the palatial Titan softball complex in Melbourne. Titans leading Miami Dade to zero. We go to the top of the fifth. Dana Peary. Strickland begins her fifth inning of work. Peary flied out to right field first time up. As you would kind of expect, Strickland's been in control the whole game. Anytime she's needed some help, the defense has been there for her. Morning. Batting just 202, but <laughs> leads the team with four home runs. Yeah. <laughs> so once she connects, it's going to go. <laughs> Strickland getting a sign from Coach Pettit. Fouls that one off the screen. Two balls and now a strike. Two and two after the foul ball. Two on two strike. Strickland checks. And comes towards the plate. Tries to get her to chase. Nothing doing. Count runs full. Three and two. Yeah, that is the one thing that the rise ball has been starting up and. and not really been one that they've been swinging at too much. Like we said in the open, though, Miami Dade does see a lot of pitches. They take a lot, and they're taking that pitch a lot this today. Right, the pitch there. Thyson, easy play on the first to Leppin, where she is waiting, and there's one out. It's always good when your third baseman's as as good as Thyson. You know, Automatic, she yeah. Playing. Playing short, she's playing up. Look at that. She just gloves it quick and no chance with that arm. That's just reps. That's why you take all those ground balls. Maya Wall now. 
one pitch flies out to left. Celebrating with Mackenzie Jewell in the outfield after that catch. <laughs> Third batter hit this inning. Back to the top of the order we go. Kiana Kadina. Single and stole a base. Reached on a fielder's choice. One for one. And we'll put that right at shout. Easy one, two, three inning. Down go the Sharks as we go to the home half of fifth. The Titans still holding on to a slim 2-0 lead. Yeah, and after that first batter, another quick one, two, three inning. She's now retired five in a row, so Strickland really, really, really settling in and uh, has the Titans ahead 2-0. Well, an investment in Eastern Florida State College is an investment in higher education, the foundation for the nation's political and economic success. Communities that support higher education flourish, and every dollar that you invest in Eastern Florida State College is a dollar invested in our community. Contact the Eastern Florida State College Foundation and the Alumni Association at 321-4337055 to learn how you can support Eastern Florida State College. Number is on your screen. And Maria finishing her warm up tosses. Like I said, she's pitched a heck of a game today. Just uh, Titans have taken advantage of a couple situations. Big hit by Play Mackenzie Jewell. Ball. And find themselves head two to zero. Little Stephen Brown type of action, it right? Definitely, is manufacture he, those runs. He would be proud of today's score so far. <laughs> Starting things happen in the home half of the fifth. Yeah. Campos, who's like we've said, made a couple really good plays in the outfield. up here to lead off the bottom of the fifth. Lined out the second, back in the second inning. Pops that one, look out below, out of play. <laughs> it's one of those you lose in the sun, you just want to duck and cover. Yeah. <laughs> Pushed it out of the stadium. 0-2. Ball hitter Campos. Wow, that was really close there. Looks like she might have got that corner. Got one of two. But oh, all two one. strikes. Yeah. Plus. Can't get much closer. Sure. Definitely Anna not. Maria. Luz held it on the. Try to get that call. Checks the wristband, lets it fly. And fouled away, pitch is wasted, still remains a ball, two strikes. Boykin on deck. And Davis in the hole. Here you go, D, here you go, D. strike. Second strikeout for Amaria. Really good spot there. <laughs> not, not much that uh, Campos is going to do with that pitch. That brings up Boykin. The right fielder up. 0 for 1 so far today. Grounds it out to third. And heads it that side again, but it's foul. In the hole 0 and 1. Way to get on and get that top of the order moving. Put this game to bed. Titans looking to go over 500 in conference play. Should this scoreline hold? Upstairs, one and one. And at the end of the day, you know, you hope for two, but you need one. So if you can continue this one and get the first one, game two, you have a little bit of pressure off. Wow, the pressure mounts on Miami Dade because they'll need one. Good swing there by Boykin. The schedule is running thin as we get into April here. Half 
halfway through. After this, it's two at Hillsboro, two at Florida Southwestern, who right now at the top of the conference with Indian River. Two versus Daytona State and two at Manatee, Sarasota. So a couple of those games, teams below you in the standings, opportunity to yeah. solidify your spot. Definitely, this is a really key week because uh, rain last week, so you get Hillsboro on Thursday, so it's a busy week with the Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday games. Thursday and right. Saturday both being away too, so makes these even bigger at home to make sure you get these. Hillsboro in 10th, Manatee, Sarasota in 9th. And then you got Florida Southwestern on Saturday. 32 and four. That was the, we talked about a little bit, that was the uh, game winning home run from right, Leppin that's here. that's a big win. <laughs> that was a big win Only for the Titans. Four losses in conference all season, the Titans handed one of them. Now they're 32 and four, Indian River 30 and four. So yeah. it's, it's a two horse race at top of the Citrus Conference. Two and two here. Boykin gets bad on it and will ground out to second. She got up the line pretty well. It's just ground ball to second is hard to beat out. Picks up Libby Davis with two out. Davis kind of do so. See what she can do here with two outs. <laughs> Emma Rose really using that outside corner in this inning. It's really coming up well for her. She's getting that call. And Davis loved to get on base here with two outs. 0 for 2 here. Down on the count 0 and 1. Big fat 0 and 2. Foul ball. To say this game is important for both teams. The Sharks, their remaining your teams above them in the standings. Yeah. South does. Central Florida, Manatee, Sarasota below them, but they finish out with four against Santa Fe, who is currently just ahead of Eastern Florida. Yeah, so, you know, if we we get both of these, we may be fans of Miami Dade in the end to right. try to see if Maybe we can catch, catch up. <laughs> Popped short right field, and Wall makes the put out. And after five, it remains a two nothing ball game here at the tight softball complex. Two innings to go in our first game of our doubleheader. The biggest challenge that students have, I believe, is just getting started. That's why we're here at the Writing Lab, is to help show them how to pre-plan their writing, how to get a good start, and then go back and revise. And we're here for every step of that. I just like to see that little eureka moment, that light bulb that goes on, and they're like, oh, I know how to do this now. I help with any class that involves writing. If it's language-based, we can help. Titans softball complex go to the top of the six. Titans have been retired. Seven straight batters for Amaria. Now Strickland gonna do something similar, five straight. Yeah. The game has kind of really settled into the rhythm they wanted. Yeah, it's really becoming the pitcher's duel that we kind of thought it was going to be. Both these pitchers are very good. Keeping the offense at bay. Taking a strike there is Kunigami. 0 for 1, flight out to short, hit by a pitch. Look at that now. <laughs> strike. Yeah, really good pitch there. Gets her in control, 1 and 2 once again. Whenever Strickland has gotten in control, she's had her way kind of with offense. Right. Settling in. And using that defense. Oops. Spoke too soon off of <laughs> Davis, a rare error. And the 
Hard hit by Kunigami, pays off. Hot shot, tough, Definitely. Easy, easy for us to say. Yeah. <laughs> Runner aboard here. And for shortstop, she's got a 943 fielding percentage, so, you know, she gloves almost all of those. Coach having a conversation. Jaden Treader due up here. Walked in, into a double play. Gloved it at third by Thyssen, but she picked off the runner at first. Kunigama hasn't had a stolen base yet this season, but force the issue makes, down you, two runs. makes you wonder if Treader's going to bunt here. Not yeah. showing. Take all away. Ball one. some life. We're going into the heart of the order here. Yeah. No hitter treader. Cervantes on deck. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, that was three just pitches, one. three balls. That was a good pitch, good take by Treader. Treader will be taking all the way here, 3-0. Yeah. Side. Coming back yeah, in. It'd be hard to get on top of that. Yeah. <laughs> Ball four. A second walk issued by Strickland. And there's Farnes at first and second. Nobody out. Coach Pettit going to have a talk with Strickland. I would imagine Alana O'Brien is ready to go if she needs her. Strickland's done a really good job so far, so I'm sure she's going to give her a chance to get out of this. Feeding inside that circle. All right, reiterating the I scouting report. Need, need some outs here. Cervantes will check in for the third time. Struck out looking in the first. And singled in the fourth, but was Cut doubled down off by, by that, yeah, that by gun Campos, from Campos. Yeah, yeah <laughs> just destroyed it. Not even fair. Pops it up. Really good Titans pitch there. Need that. Needed that one. And got it. One away, big out. Abby Luz singled her last time up. The ball in play both times. <laughs> Takes a strike. Foul. It's her ahead 0-2. Better to chase one here. Wow, oh, not a bad pitch. Foul ball. Yeah, that was kind of stay alive kind of swing. Right. Live to see another day. Too close to take. <laughs> Four 
Brooks out at third, taking care of the lead runner. Good heads up defense there from Libby Davis. 5 on the put out. She gets to get the out of the air that was hers, so that's good. Now there's two down for Hernandez. One is the first and second, but big two outs now. Yeah. Much different situation. Hernandez coming out of Miami Somerset Academy. Flight out, struck out. Hero here. <laughs> Take a strike. One and one. Nice. Got her in a hole. One and two. Good rise ball there. Throw it right by her. Now she's in control a little bit. One good pitch away from being out of this inning. Just upstairs, ball two. Trying to get her to go there again. Comes. Slide out of place, takes two and two. Treader at second, lose at first. Go ahead, run at the plate. Hernandez gives it a rip but right to center where Kenzie Jewell is waiting. And the Titans out of the inning, despite lasting the allowing the first two batters to reach base. So there was one hit and two left on and still no scoring for Miami Dade and they're running out of outs here. Yeah, really nice job by Strickland to get out of that jam. Remains a 2-0 lead, but uh, Amarillo has been red hot, but the Titans just keep hanging on to that 2-0 lead. Well, register now for Eastern Florida State College's summer sessions. Face-to-face, -face, online, and hybrid courses are available on all four Eastern Florida campuses. It's also a good time to review admissions requirements and meet with an advisor if you need it. Go to easternflorida.edu for more information. Bottom of the six. Titans hoping this is the final time they'll bat in this first half of doubleheader. We'll play for some insurance, though. Yeah, it'll be the middle of the order, so Tyson Jewel Leppin. Also sets up for the bottom of the order for Miami Dade in the seventh, so. Tyson singled and flew out. Scored a run in the third. Back up looking to start things off in the sixth. Officially one for two. That takes first pitch swinging. That's just over our heads. infield and that will be the first out He's tracking it the whole way was Hernandez <laughs> Mackenzie Jewell had the big RBI in the third actually one for one hit by a pitch in the first Kyle Leppin on deck yeah, you always ask yourself Who's going to step up when the leading hitter isn't in the lineup? And today it's been Jewel. Peary's under it. Quickly two away. Fly ball outs. Kyle Leppin now. 
up and strikeout victim in the first and grounded out to third. Back in the third. Chance to get a hit here in this one. It's safely in 304. <laughs> Strike. Really impressive stuff from Amarillo. Hasn't allowed a base runner since that RBI double from Jewel That's back in the nine in a row. Third. Really found her groove and pitching like that no hitter she had on Saturday. That's a tough foul. Oh and two here. Oh, so need some run support here. Top of the seven or top of the seventh that this is going to be in the books. We'll take that break and get ready for game two. <laughs> and strikes out looking. Third K for Amarilla. She is retired 10 in a row, but her Sharks trail by two. When I transitioned from student over to employee, uh, there were so many people that I already met and made good impressions with and had good established relationships that I had no problem getting jobs. Everybody was very welcoming, letting me in. And knowing that I was a new therapist, they didn't just throw me to the wolves per se. They let me work my way into things. Uh, they were always checking on me, hey, you need help with anything, everything fine. So there's always very caring people out there. You're never just set out on your own when you're new. And everybody watches your back, takes care of you. Top of the seventh, three outs away. Titans from a, they hope is a two nothing victory here against Miami Dade to put them over 500 in conference play. It'll be Hernandez, Ortega, and Peary. Six, seven, eight in the order. And for the Sharks. <laughs> Good pitch to start things off from Strickland. That's Ortega. Perry Wall, so bottom of the order. Good. Quickly in hole 0 and 2, Ortega. I guess say Strickland looks like she's ready to shut this door. Comes out throwing two quick strikes. Looking for that complete game. Would be her seventh of the season. If she can lock this up. Center on the run, shielding her eyes from the sun. Jules got it, and there is one away. And much like with the bat, Jules been good in center field. Playing it for the first time this season since it's usually Borky out there. She's filled in nicely, both with the bat and with the glove. Fury. Swing of the back and make this interesting. That's four home runs. One out. Ball. One. No. Two and up. Side just foul. Yeah, that trouble from a few feet to the right. For sure, that was a close one. Curry 0 for 2. Fly it out, ground it out. Pitch. Popped up. 
between three players. Who wants it? And it's dropped. Shallow and running all the way is Peary. And the tying run now at the plate. <laughs> yeah, really good job by Peary not, not stopping. This was just a communication error by the Titans. I don't think McKenzie really saw it by the looks. And then Marissa called for it, but the ball kind of carried away uh, from yeah, her. No man's land. But you look at the, the flag, you wouldn't think that, but it actually carried more away from her at second than you would have thought. It's easier to run, <laughs> run in than run out. Yeah. Well, that's made it interesting here. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> Get out of here. It's a nine hole hitter, Maya Wall. Did have a single back in the third. Fly it out to left. <laughs> Takes a strike. Strickland's gotten out of the jam a couple of times in this game. Yeah, she really has when she needs to. She buckles right down and makes the pitches. This is another one of those where let your defense work a little bit. Upstairs, they try to pick her off at second, or not in time, shout. Peary running all the way on that error. And now there are two aboard on a hit by pitch. So with one away, there are two on now. And the top of the lineup coming up, so. Tying run at first. Go ahead, run at the plate with one away. Shelby Pettit can have a word. Or excuse me, it's Aguero. Gonna have a. I think they're gonna maybe pinch run. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna have a pinch runner at first. So after the. Hit by pitch. Yeah, she. <laughs> that hurt, but she's okay because she gets to go to first, kind of thing there. <laughs> Again, number of the first player at first, the runner. Number nine. <laughs> Excuse me, Ariana Thomason out of Sacramento. does have four stolen bases, so a little bit of speed now at first. Conference in the circle now. Key inflection point in this game. Titans have led since bottom of the second. Got the first out now. Yeah, now they're going to the, have to earn it here. You got the top of the order coming up now. Tadino one of three. Or one of two. Single and stole the base in the first. Fielder's choice in the third. Your Miami Dade, this is who you want up. 291 this season. Sitting on a five game hit streak. takes a ball. Side ball, two. Yeah, Danger one. zone now. That one had a lot of movement to it. We're good, we're good. Throw strike here. You got it, you got it. <laughs> There's a strike, two and one. <laughs> Scrappy bunch of sharks. Gonna make this interesting. Kadina. Oh, I had it go up high to Jewel. She hesitated for a second, hopped up and took it away. So everybody had to stay runners wise and they are now two away. Hit it hard though. 
She did. She hit it right at her, which is always a tough one as an outfielder to judge just exactly where that is. And she used every inch of her height there right. to make sure she made that catch. That was trouble if it got past. <laughs> that's scoring two and tying the game. And that's definitely one of those things where it's a little different playing center field than it is playing right field. So yes. She Kuna, did a good job. Kunigami, the final chance here, two away. Singled her last time at the plate. Yeah. One and one. <laughs> one one fouled off. And the Sharks down to their final strike. Razor thin margins here. Yeah, they've had chances every inning, and Strickland's just been able to get out of every jam, and she's about to get out of another one. Sends that one, and unable to make it. One run will score. Here comes around second. This is gonna be a good stand up play. triple, and she tripped going to third. But a two RBI triple ties this game from Kunigami, who sent it to right. Boykin had trouble reading it. And we are tied. Biggest hit of this game. Yeah, that was a huge one. Go down ahead, the line, right field. Just down the line. Got to get out of this. See if you can win it in the bottom of the seventh. No. Stares the ball. Opportune hitting. Right, you said that Shelby Pettick, when you asked her, how does Miami Nade do it? It's a little bit of smoke and mirrors and, and, that's and opportune hits. That right there. Hang in there. <laughs> There's a strike. Now we'll have a home half of the seventh. That's a minimum. Yeah, that's, Amarillo's been really good on the mound and kept them in it. And then they were able to capitalize here in the seventh. Swing and a miss. Down to the final strike again. Oh, that big blow. Amina Kunigami. Two RBI triple. She was thinking of going home and tripped around yeah. the bag. And that would have been interesting because the, the play was coming home. So that would have been an interesting play at the plate. So sh a short handed <laughs> Titans defense. Let them down here late on. Two and two. Comes that right fielder, you just get it. Ball gets a little squirrely on you the way it's coming yep. off the bat, and it played away. Foul back, two and two, still. Strickland wants to make a quality pitch here, doesn't want to go three, two. Wide to center, tracking back and making the catch was Jewel to retire the side, but two runs score on a couple of hits, and we are tied at two. We go to the bottom of the seventh. The engineering technology program is a two-year AS degree. It's a lot of hands-on, a lot of industry skills, and our programs are up-to-date with the local demand. We talk to the local industry and ask them what do they need from our graduate. And so far, we're providing a good workforce for the Brevard area. When the student graduate from this program, actually, we have a waiting list. A lot of companies want some of our graduates yesterday.
back to the bottom of the seventh. We didn't feel we'd have this, but credit the Sharks. Tying the game in the home half of the seventh. Well, those missed opportunities insurance run looming large now. It's barring a pinch hitter. Jimmy Ford, Corazzini, and Shout. Singled and scored back in the second to Madison. Here's a good lead off here. Yeah, let's see if they can break through against Amarillo, who's been really good. He's retired 10 straight. Just keep riding that. <laughs> yeah, if you're Miami Dade, there's nobody better you want on the mound right now. Scored the first run, reaching on there. Missed. Ball a strike. He's lived up in the Battle of the Aces. 2 2 game. Definitely has. Been a well played and well pitched game. And Maria has just sunk, stuck in since the bottom of the third. And it's two and two. And you talked about, again, the fact that she had a no-hitter last week. Good to left field, base hit to start things off. And the winning run at first. We've been talking about her, and once again, Madison Ford comes up with a big hit. Get things started here. Corazzini, Matt for the third time. See if she's bunting once again. Did a really good and job of that. Sack second. in the second inning, yeah. Bear will lay down the and punch again. And the winning run at second. Well, get back quick. Woo, <laughs> don't overrun that. <laughs> so sack bunt. Doing the job, Corazzini. And the winning run with nobody out is at second. Yeah, once again, the second time today, she's really dead in that ball right out in front of the plate. Really nice bunt. They tried, tried to get forward to move off the second, but she wasn't too far away, got back. There's Marissa Schout. The fielder's choice in the first, flied out, the infield. And now with the Schout to be the hero. A couple of sophomores that have been here two years, both Schout and Campos coming up next. You rely on that leadership. And in these situations. Ace hit likely wins the game. That one's fouled back 0 and 2. On deck is Campos. Two to shout, gets her to chase. And safely moving to third on the wild pitch is Ford. She's got to put it in play now. Coach Diaguero wants to have a word with everybody, the entire team here. Coach Diaguero. 13th season coming up in that 300 win mark. Native of Miami, All-Dade County player at St. Brendan. 
Miami Dade College is a player, then went to St. Thomas University, won three conference championships there. She was a shortstop and second baseman at that next level. No errors at all during her senior season. So wow. those are the fundamentals. Yeah. <laughs> She led the Sharks to States every year except 2020. I was going to say, yeah, they've always got a really good team every season. Yeah, and that was the COVID year. Yeah. So if we can hold off here, extend this game, put yourself in position. Conference names have changed, but Miami Dade and a couple times. Eastern <laughs> Florida have yeah. always been in the same conference, so we, we see her every season. <laughs> Reset, ball two strikes on Marissa Shout. It's a crack, this should do That's it. That's gonna do it. Taking it deep, it's caught. What Runner a hit tag by Shout. And score, and the Titans win it 3-2. Sack fly for Marissa Shout. Just hit it deep. Ford is the winning run, and the Titans have a one-run victory in the first half of this doubleheader. What a big swing from Marissa Shout. Like I said, sophomore, second baseman. Made sure Titans walked away with a win in game one. Made it interesting. <laughs> yeah, we definitely had a good game. <laughs> well, that rounds out. We'll wrap up this first half of the doubleheader when we come back on WEFS. Titans a winner in the end in seven innings, 3-2. My name is Kenny Neff, and I am enrolled in the Eastern Florida State College welcome program. The cost of it actually surprised me on how it wasn't nearly what I thought it would be. My instructors are probably the best instructor I could probably ask for. Your total welding throughout the day, you're probably welding four hours, five hours. When the weekend comes, I'm waiting for Monday to come back around because I love welding, just being in there, hands on, just constantly burning rods. The engineering technology program is a two-year AS degree. It's a lot of hands-on, a lot of industry skills, and our programs are up to date with the local demand. We talk to the local industry and ask them what do they need from our graduate. And so far, we're providing a good workforce for the Brevard area. When the student graduate from this program, actually, we have a waiting list. A lot of companies want some of our graduates yesterday. Titans had to work for that one, extended an extra half inning. They had the 2 nothing lead going into the top of the seventh, conceded to, and then got the big uh, RBI sack fly uh, in the end to get the 3-2 victory. Jeff Radcliffe, Mike Parsons, very big victory here for the Titans to get a uh, little adversity, take one on the chin a little bit, and then have a response. Yeah, and really good response from, you know, both Hannah Strickland on the mound and Marissa, you can't say much more about that hit. That's a big one in a big spot. Well, let's take a look at uh, some of the key plays for Eastern Florida in that game. They spread out those three runs. First one happened in the second. Just some good base running there. Madison Ford taking advantage of the ground ball. And Thyssen with the uh, scored here on this play. Big double from, from Mackenzie Jewel. Jewell. And like we said before, Thyssen was not stopping. She just made sure she scored that run. Gave the Titans a 2-0 lead. After the Sharks tied it up, we go to the home half with one out, sending it deep. It's playable, but deep enough to bring home the run in Madison Ford. So shout the RBI sack fly to secure victory number 17 in conference and they improved to 33 and 18 overall so now you got to see it out and see if you can win a second 
which yeah, is the key here. We're going to see if there's any lineup changes or, or changes defensively after a couple of miscues defensively. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be interesting to see what Coach Pettick does. But the good news is no bullpen was used on either side, so all the pitchers are ready for game two. And, uh, you know, Madison Ford scored twice, including the game winner. Marissa Shout comes up big. Mackenzie Jewell comes up big. So, you know, at the end of game one, you got to feel good if you're the Titans. And if you're Miami Dade, you pitched a heck of a game. You were in the game the whole way. So game two, you just want to try to split now. Yeah, I have to like the fight that they showed if you're Miami Dade as their season like the Titans starting to wind to a close last eight games or so. Titans in fifth place and consolidating that. Look to consolidate a little bit more when we come back for the second half of our doubleheader. We'll return shortly for game two. In the meantime, enjoy this video from WEFS-TV's production team titled Training Tomorrow's Workforce Today. This program details how Eastern Florida State College is playing a pivotal role by educating a new generation of high-tech workers and collaborating with industry partners to ensure a skilled and educated workforce to meet Brevard County's increasing economic need. We'll see you back here. economy is booming and high-tech companies ranging from major firms like SpaceX and L3 Harris to rapidly growing small businesses all share the same thing a need for skilled workers to fill their ranks and fuel more growth Eastern Florida State College is playing a central role in that effort by educating a new generation of high-tech workers that are changing the face of Brevard County's future. With career and technical programs such as aerospace and engineering technology, robotics, cybersecurity, and more, EFSC graduates are bringing state-of-the-art skills to the workplace. It's a top priority of college president, Dr. Jim Ritchie, with some EFSC programs becoming state models for developing a high-tech workforce. One of EFSC's key partners is the Economic Development Commission of Florida's Space Coast, whose leaders see the college's programs as essential in tackling workforce shortages and attracting new companies. How the EDC and Eastern Florida partners has been transformative over the last few years. At first, I think it was us being aware, they're on the board, they're aware of what we do, we're aware of what they do, and it was, this is great. But as the need for training and workforce is ever increasing demands, so has our relationship with Eastern Florida's gotten far more sophisticated. Eastern Florida State College works closely with the Economic Development Commission to help ensure existing and new businesses have the workforce they need. We meet with local businesses and those looking to relocate to the area to understand their needs and make sure our curriculum is consistent with those needs. A prime example of where the college's efforts are paying off is at Kennedy Space Center, where commercial space companies are reinventing human spaceflight. Among them is Lockheed Martin where EFSC students in aerospace technology serve apprenticeships, doing hands-on work on the Orion spacecraft that will take astronauts back to the moon and on journeys to Mars. The apprenticeship program, as part of a two-year degree, allows students to be selected and literally work with us here on the floor developing and building the Orion spacecraft. And that is their foot in the door. It's great for us. Eastern Florida State College brings that talent forward from the pipeline and gives them a landing spot so that we, the team can literally hit the ground running. And it's been a great partnership and we really do appreciate that. So the apprenticeship program at the time when I was part of it, it was people who had graduated from the program um, who were picked by the professors and, and other people in the program to come out here and work part-time, paid, 
uh, to learn the skills needed to transition to a full-time position out here on the, on, this, on the space program. Part of the reason why Eastern Florida joined up initially for the apprenticeship program was to help fill the talent gap. A lot of the people that were working out here at the time were part of the shuttle program where we're getting ready to retire. And they saw the need to bring in new people before those people, before the shuttle folks retired, so they could pass on their knowledge and their skill sets. I graduated from Eastern Florida with my AA, and I was looking to go to a four year college to uh, major in mechanical engineering. I started my first semester at the four year program, and I didn't know if it was for me, so I went back, told my mom, I was like, nah, I think I'm thinking about the Eastern Florida State program. Ended up doing that. I love the hands-on. I think it's a lot different than going to a four-year degree first. So to get the hands-on experience, I think is much more critical. There are always opportunities to come out here and work on, this, on the Orion program. Um, we're, we're constantly looking to refresh the, 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 the talent pool. The college also has a strong partnership with Airbus US Space and Defense, where EFSC apprentices and graduates are using skills they learned in mechatronics, robotics, and other fields to build a fleet of satellites at the company's KSC facility that will improve global connection to the internet. About 35 years ago, I was an apprentice, so straight away that's something which I can automatically relate to. I think there's no better way to learn about an industry. Uh, it can be our great industry, it can be cooking, unless you do an apprenticeship program. We started working in manufacturing very shortly after we became employed and very shortly after we joined the apprenticeship. It was almost an immediate turnaround of joining the apprenticeship, becoming an employee, and working on satellites. So, uh, 18 years old, right out of high school, I was manufacturing satellites, and we actually had our first launch from our Merritt Island built satellites just a couple days before my 19th birthday. So, 18 years old, I had 36 satellites up in space that I helped build. A common thread for high-tech firms is a demand for technicians trained in advanced manufacturing. And here too, EFSC is a leading supplier of those workers. Any company that's going to be successful is going to be involved in advanced manufacturing. So advanced manufacturing is key to us because the companies that exist here that particularly have to supply the Department of Defense in many ways demand that. So we have got to be involved and be ready with a workforce in advanced manufacturing. Every local company here that we deal with, our industry partners, they are starving for young talent. The reason why this is such a high demand, in my opinion, there's unfortunately a lot of people my age that are retiring and there is a shortage of the skilled trades. So the students that graduate from here, our companies are, are ready to hire them as soon as they're ready to go. We live in a digital age, which makes it crucial to protect data from industrial espionage, ransomware, and other threats. On EFSC's Palm Bay campus, the Center for Cybersecurity and Digital Forensics is providing digital detectives for area companies. Its programs carry impressive credentials, with the center having gained the prestigious designation from the National Security Agency as a national center of academic excellence in cybersecurity. In 2022, we were designated as an NSA Center for Academic Excellence, and that means that we provide the labs and the curriculum that the NSA deems worthy of a cybersecurity institution. And with that designation now, our students know that they are they're getting the best education possible in our area for cybersecurity, and it helps open them up to different job opportunities. There are specific jobs that only employers will allow a CAE student or alumni to apply for, so that helps that. Currently today, there's around 600,000 open positions in cybersecurity, so we are at a crisis mode for looking for 
those individuals who have experience in cyber, experience in IT in general. In Brevard County, there's around 2,000 open positions, and Florida itself about 32,000, according to cyberseek.org. So those are rough estimates, and it's also based on what type of people are um, have cer certain certifications and those open positions that they're looking at different um, job placement websites. High-tech education requires the latest in high-tech facilities, and Eastern Florida is building on its success by investing in major new training centers. On the Melbourne campus, construction is starting on a new $20 million center for innovative technology education. This facility will set a regional standard for tailored programs to meet the specific workforce needs of high-tech companies. On the COCO campus, a new advanced technology center is taking shape for training in a range of programs focusing on the needs of commercial space companies. And on the Titusville campus, a new aerospace center of excellence has opened its doors with the first class of dual enrolled high school students getting a jump start on their careers. It's not as high maintenance as an actual dual enrollment class, so you're able to get a feel for it if you want to do this. And also, the aerospace program is so hands-on that you're able to learn as you go, and the professors are always willing to help you out, and you're, oh, you feel like you're able to talk to them. Being able to take aerospace classes through dual enrollment is just amazing, and I'm so happy I'm here for it. Eastern Florida State College offers programs on each of our four campuses and online to meet local workforce needs. Whether it's associate or bachelor's degrees, short-term training certificates, industry certifications, or customized training for business and industry, we strive to give our students multiple options to meet local workforce needs. From one end of the Space Coast to the other, EFSC is the go-to place for high-tech education and training. As the demand for skilled workers keeps increasing, the college will continue to work with its industry partners to ensure the workforce is second to none. I still don't know if I've fully wrapped my head around the enormity of working on the Orion Project. It's manned space flight. We're going back to the moon. And to think that I have a part of that is, is a lot. So of the 618 satellites that we have in orbit, I was here and helped with 612 of them, all the ones that were produced here in our maritime island facility. Eastern Florida State College, the sky is truly the limit.
I'm Patrick Hoskin, and I'm a student at the Eastern Florida State College Welding Program. You start off with stick welding, and then progress to MIG welding, shielded metal arc welding, and they say by the end of the year we'll end up being TIG welding. So we're gonna go through almost everything that they can possibly throw at us. After the first two weeks of class, it is all hands-on. The cost is really low considering it's a full welding program. This classroom does count as one year's experience in the field. Eastern Florida State College has a two-year aerospace technology degree. We are the only school in the state of Florida that offers this degree. The aerospace program is taught by industry professionals, so you're not getting just somebody that has a degree that's teaching you stuff about aerospace. You're learning from people that actually worked in the aerospace field. This program is pretty unique. It's very hands-on. We train technicians in mechanical assembly skills, electronic skills, working with composite materials, fluid systems like pneumatics and hydraulics, and we also have some system integration. The aerospace program is not only limited to aerospace industry. The skills that the students learn in this program are transferable. So in between all the instructors and all the experience that we bring from the field, we make the program whole and we make them a well-rounded students, a more flexible student, a more capable student. One of the biggest advantages of this program is that the instructors themselves, they have a tremendous amount of experience. Just hearing their stories when you're in class is, is pretty cool. I'm an asthmatic myself and have breathing problems and had to suffer through being a child and through adulthood and you know it's well maintained myself through my pulmonologists and being able to help other people breathe easier and to recognize signs and symptoms and be able to teach them beyond what a pulmonologist can because we're more trained in you know they have a broader spectrum of what they cover where we're more narrow focused on it it allows me to actually take care of myself better and to be able to instruct my patients to manage their asthmatic problems as well. If somebody was asking me about Eastern Florida Respiratory Care Program, I would highly recommend it. It's a great, great program. I came out of the automotive racing industry and had no experience whatsoever in the medical field. And the program with the support courses leading in gave me all the tools and necessary skills to become a good respiratory therapist in the field. I would highly recommend it. I've been on national TV uh, last year, uh, the BET Awards pre-show 2022 alongside Miss Pat. I'm doing a Chris Rock impression on there. Um, I've been on their website. Uh, I've been on different, different TV shows. I've been interviewed, um, viral success. You know, my TikTok following is over 200,000 followers. My Instagram is over 19,000. Um, I'm finding so much success. My stand-up career is going great. Um, and I'm getting more and learning about that a lot more. I've been able to travel to LA. I've been able to travel to Atlanta. I filmed two, two commercials. So much has happened, but it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for someone like Mr. Michael Cador. If it wasn't for someone to guide me and really say, hey, I believe in you, you can do this. You know, it just goes back to show you that male minority is so beneficial for someone who has dreams like me and even someone who's younger than me that might have the same type of goal and vision it's definitely the place to be Titan softball complex here, midway between our half uh, doubleheader break. So do have a couple of changes we'll talk about when we come back to the lineup, but mainly the same. But most importantly, if you're Shelby Pettick, you're happy. You're, you're able to eke out a win uh, under some trying circumstances late on, and you've gotten one now that the idea is to turn to and keep the pressure on. Yeah, now, you know, now you kind of relax just a little bit because you did get that first one. Focus on getting the, the sweep today and, and putting yourself in a real position for fifth place. But, yeah, she was definitely a happy coach after that after that win. Uh, definitely was happy for Marissa Shout to, to get the big hit that right. allowed them to, to get that win. But, you know, 
it's one of those things that they they fought back and and we were able to to make another punch in order to get the win well get you squared away on the pitching matchup looks like we'll have lucy walters for eastern florida and uh amy tohara We'll go for the Sharks, and we'll get you scored away when we come back after this break. Here on WEFS, it's Titans softball, game two of the doubleheader against the Sharks right after this. I'm Patrick Hoskin, and I'm a student at the Eastern Florida State College welding program. You start off with stick welding, and then progress to MIG welding, shielded metal arc welding, and they say by the end of the year, we'll end up being TIG welding. So. We're gonna go through almost everything that they can possibly throw at us. After the first two weeks of class, it is all hands-on. The cost is really low considering it's a full welding program. This classroom does count as one year's experience in the field. Eastern Florida State College has a two-year aerospace technology degree. We are the only school in the state of Florida that offers this degree. The aerospace program is taught by industry professionals, so you're not getting just somebody that has a degree that's teaching you stuff about aerospace. You're learning from people that actually worked in the aerospace field. This program is pretty unique. It's very hands-on. We train technicians in mechanical assembly skills, electronic skills, working with composite materials, fluid systems like pneumatics and hydraulics, and we also have some system integration. The aerospace program is not only limited to aerospace industry, the skills that the students learn in this program are transferable. So in between all the instructors and all the experience that we bring from the field, we make the program whole and we make them a well-rounded students, a more flexible student, a more capable student. One of the biggest advantages of this program is that the instructors themselves, they have a tremendous amount of experience. Just hearing their stories when you're in class, is, it's pretty cool. I'm an asthmatic myself and have breathing problems and had to suffer through being a child and through adulthood and you know it's well maintained myself through my pulmonologists and being able to help other people breathe easier and to recognize signs and symptoms and be able to teach them beyond what a pulmonologist can because we're more trained and you know they have a broader spectrum of what they cover where we're more narrow focused on it it allows me to actually take care of myself better and be able to instruct my patients to manage their asthmatic problems as well. If somebody was asking me about Eastern Florida Respiratory Care Program, I would highly recommend it. It's a great, great program. I came out of the automotive racing industry and had no experience whatsoever in the medical field. And the program with the support courses leading in gave me all the tools and necessary skills to become a good respiratory therapist in the field. I would highly recommend it. I've been on national TV uh, last year, uh, the BET Awards pre-show 2022 alongside Miss Pat. I'm doing a Chris Rock impression on there. Um, I've been on their website. Uh, I've been on different, different TV shows. I've been interviewed, um, viral success. You know, my TikTok following is over 200,000 followers. My Instagram's over 19,000. Um, I'm finding so much success. My stand-up career is going great. Um, and I'm getting more and learning about that a lot more. I've been able to travel to LA. I've been able to travel to Atlanta. I filmed two, two commercials. So much has happened, but it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for someone like Mr. Michael Cador. If it wasn't for someone to guide me and really say, hey, I believe in you, you can do this. You know, it just goes back to show you that male minority is so beneficial for someone who has dreams like me and even someone who's younger than me that might have the same type of goal and vision it's definitely the place to be For game number two, Titans taking game one, three, two of this doubleheader. We're back like the Backstreet Boys. All <laughs> right. So here we go. Uh, <laughs> Jeff Radcliffe uh, uh, alongside Mike Parsons and our entire WEFS crew. Now the challenges keep it going after that little break. A couple of little changes to talk about. The, a little change in right field defensively for Eastern Florida and at catcher uh, for Miami-Dade. 
Yeah, so, you know, for the Titans, Liz Bratcher will make her first start out of right field, and that was kind of the goal for Coach Pettick was, you know, play Boykin the first game and, and then get Bratcher some experience out in right field in game two, and so that's what she's doing here. And then, you know, uh, for them, just replacing the catcher, pretty much everybody else. Wall moves up to number seven in the in the batting average in the batting order, but pretty much the same. Which after game one, you would pretty much keep everything the same. Both teams played really well, so there's a look at the lineup. Maria Vals Raya is the new catcher. She'll bat at the bottom of the order. Some change, just a little of a few shuffles in there for um, for Miami Dade. Eastern Florida is just a like for like sub. Here's how it will set up. Again, Bratcher there in right field, the big change. Campos and Jewel out in the outfield. Thyssen, Davis, Shout, Leppin. Walters uh, is obviously the other change, the new pitcher. And then Madison Ford will continue to catch. So batting first here is Kadena. Lucy Walters is a lot like Hannah Strickland. Throws hard. Ball. One and zero. Oh. Ran into a tough stretch mid-season, but has been pitching well again lately. Really pitched awesome in the beginning of the season for the Titans, but been on a roll again lately. Ball. A little bit about what Walters out of Deland, nine and yep. five, three point six seven ERA, eight complete games. So can go the distance and has the stamina to do so just like Strickland did in the first game. Definitely. Not as much strikeout stuff as, as Strickland, but uh, definitely uses the defense. Gets out of jams. You're welcome. And it was a new hair color when uh, when I saw her today. <laughs> okay. So more to the, uh, the TV haircut. The hair color that uh, she had when she first got on campus. So <laughs> Got to mix it up. <laughs> His first Three step balls, no in this strikes. one. And change at the umps now. Fernando Vera is now on the base paths. Uh, Michael Finch behind the plate. Here's a 3 0. Hard. And gets a strike. Good pitch. Just kind of trying to find the, the rhythm in the zone here early. 3 1. One for three in the last game. Drops the butt and foul ball. Full count now. Walters. Deals and foul to the left side, stays three and two. Yeah. Count full here, first batter of the second game. So board all clear off after the three two win. Gets her. Mm. Look and thought she had it. Thought she had the, the walk. The first strikeout for Walters. Good job working back into it. Yeah, it definitely goes from 3-0. Nice pitch on the outside corner there for the strikeout. And after I said that she doesn't strike out a lot, she opens the game with a strikeout. Right, they're 26 <laughs> now on the season. <laughs> Take everyone you can get. It's Kunigami, the big two RBI <laughs> triple Ball. in the seventh. from Michael Finch, one and one. One, one. If you're Miami Dade, you're just trying to build on that seventh inning. Really came back and tied the game. It's a piece. Tracking back in right and 
Bratcher making that first start makes the play. They always say that, you know, the ball always finds you. And so of Bratcher. Course. Yeah, get, get you, it gets you out there. It's like you're, you're a quarterback, you want to get that first hit in. Exactly. So it's, it's good. Now Bratcher can breathe out there. She made her first catch out there and, and just play. So Jaden Treader coming up now. Ball. Two away. Treader walked the double play. Walked twice, so 0 for 2. Clean slate here to start game two. Gets a piece, fouls it off. One, one. Hard! And it's a strike. Ball, two strikes now to Kunigami. Took a little okay, bit off Treader, that one. Me. Nice one pitch, ball, two strikes. outside corner. Two strikeouts. Really good start for Walters. Three up, three down. Home half of the first in the second game of the doubleheader. Titans will come to bat. Take a look at for the placement here on this ball. Yeah, really had her out front. Good pitch. A lot of spin to it. Good start for Lucy Walters here in game two. Home half, no score. It'll be Davis, Thiessen, and Jewell to lead things off just like the last game. Yeah, Eastern Florida pretty much goes with the same lineup most games. She's got her starters and they produce, so why change it? <coughs> Amy Tohara warming up now. So let's take a look at what Tohara brings here. She is their, their number two. Uh, 106 innings pitched. That is a workhorse. 4.03 ERA, three and nine. Did have seven shutout innings against Daytona State. 20 appearances. So yeah, yeah. used to gobbling up the innings. So here's the changes. Uh, it happens the, towards the bottom of the order. Libby Davis, Brooke Thiessen, Mackenzie Jewell, Kyla Leppin, then Ford. Corazzini gets another go here. Marissa Shout, Bratcher in at the eight hole and Campos will stay there at nine. Yeah, like you said, Tohara really been a workhorse for him. Coming off a seven, seven inning shutout against Daytona State last week. So, you know, just like game one starter Amarilla, really been pitching well lately. So look at that graphic. Luz was still in there as the catcher. That is a change. It's Maria Vals Raya, the new catcher, catching for Amy Tohara. We'll take our first look at her. Dead ball! Touched her. So lead off runner aboard. The ball's high. Oh yeah. Just like uh, earlier with Mackenzie Jewell, it goes right off the right. right off the guard. So nothing really hurt for Davis, but she's hit once again. She's you know trying to get the, the record for most hit pit, hit by pitch in the in an, in a season for us. <laughs> Not really a stat I would want, but <laughs> it's in the record books. <laughs> Weak chopper, short. Flip to second for the out, but overthrow on the double play attempt. I don't think they were going to get her anyway. So there's one away. <laughs> Fielder's choice. Yeah, Thyssen gets down the line pretty good. Oh, uh, yeah, Livy had to, had to stop there for a minute to make sure it wasn't caught, and that kind of cost her. So that brings up Mackenzie Jewell. Ball. A big first game. Right. Jewell hit by a pitch. Then the big RBI double in the third. One ball. Went into the last game batting 381. 
three home runs. That's a runner at first, one away. Ball. Tyson's always a threat to, to steal. Right. Don't think that Tahara doesn't know that. That was Ryan, the catcher. Ball. 3 and 0 here. Right. Three Keep balls, it out of no the strike strikes. Zone. Yeah, she's been working on the front of the mound, I think. Her and Walters probably have a much different stride. So she might be falling in a hole a little bit. Good pitch there. So now Jewel will be ready. 3 1. Nice in it first. Here's count. Turns on it, makes it 3 2. Three, two. Count. He gets a piece, puts it foul. Straighten that out a little bit. Move some runners around. Yeah, she definitely got good contact there. Just hit it foul. Inning number one, our second game. First ever doubleheader on here at WEFS. Usually we do the one and yeah. say so long. And a base hit. Move the runner over. Good piece of hitting. And Jewel is aboard with the single. Dyson over to second. Now Leppin. Four hole hitter. Hit by pitch. Had a, no, rather she went 0 for 3. A couple of strikeouts. I'd like to atone for that here in this game. Definitely one of the Titan hitters that's happy that Amarillo is off the, is right, off the yeah, mound. Yeah. <laughs> happy to see somebody different. <laughs> Not a piece. Calls it away. All one to one. Just the one over board, but or one out. But two runners on here. Opportunity to get a lead off score here. Way to run. Oh. Made the catch. Or no? Yep. Can't see. We, we were blocked a yep. little bit. She did make the catch. Uh, Thyssen was went. right on the ball and made it to third. Sack fly. Moves the runners over. Two away, though. Madison and Maddie Ford. Board. Had a really good first game. Did, scored a couple of times, back including the winning run. Big single to start things off in that seventh inning. Now she has a chance to drive a couple in. Ducks on the pond for the Titans here early in this ball. one. Upstairs a ball from Tohara. Tohara from Lima, Peru. Number of teammates from the same place. Fun ball. The 1 0 from Tahara. Hard! Ford will take a strike. Yeah, she took a lot off of that one just to guide it in there on the corner. Evens the, rec evens the count, 1 and 1. Looking to start this thing off here with a two out single or more. Hard. Now behind the count one and two. So Tahara came back with a couple nice pitches there to, to get ahead. 
One ball, two strikes. Try to get out of a jam here in the first. Went down and got it. Throw on to first. Cervantes gloves it, and that is inning. Ford retired 5-3. We go to the top of the second. No score between the Sharks and Titans. Build a successful career with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. You can choose from nearly 25 tracks in today's top job fields of business, healthcare, and computer technologies, with classes tailored to meet your needs on campus and online. A bright future awaits you with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. To learn more, visit easternflorida.edu slash go slash bachelors. Lucy Walter is back for her second inning of work. Went one, two, three. Looked impressive in that first inning. Looked to keep this thing going against the four, five, six hitters here of the Sharks. Yeah, it definitely was. Threw a lot of strikes. Two strikeouts, one looking. Looks to keep it going here in the second. Cervantes, a strikeout victim in the first game. Did have a single, so it's one of three. High a ball. About as far as you can go in Florida, Key West. She hails from. That's a bit of a drive. Yeah. Beautiful drive. <laughs> Overseas highway. Ball. Inside ball, too. Beautiful place to go visit, too. Two balls. Being an Ernest Hemingway fan. It's yes, all the uh, <laughs> the uh, the cats, the cats mm -hmm. with the extra toe. <laughs> yeah, I've been there. It's good. The stories about Hemingway are the best, though. Yes, right? and the sloppy joes and for sure. And by being a little bit three balls, three so and zero, oh. just like the first at bat, three zero oh count. We'll work our way back into it. Four. Ball four, so first batter aboard here in the second in the form of Cervantes. First walk issued by Walters. Walters coming into this game has walked more than she struck out, 27 and 25. She had even that until that one. It was yep. 27 and 27, now back behind the eight ball. Hey! As Ortega takes a strike. This game goes late. Lights work here. They do. As opposed to Bruce Bochy right now, there's a <laughs> bit of a one. snafu. Yep. Across the way. We'll be there next week. We will be there again next week. As the Titans fighting for their playoff lives. And ironically enough, it'll be Miami Dade that we'll be, <laughs> that we'll be seeing on the baseball side. The turn two here. I will just get the lead runner. So Cervantes retired on the fielder's choice. Ortega makes it the first. But there's one away. Yeah, this one was just hit a little too lightly to turn the double play, but 
Good fundamentals. Getting you out a second. If you don't think you, if you don't think you got it, don't throw it. Big chop, cutting it foul. Dana Peary, center fielder. And Marcio, Mexico, leads the team with four home runs. Batting 202, though. All or nothing. <laughs> Definitely has the power if, uh, if she gets a hold of one. Upstairs. Oh, and two. Getting ahead of here, Peary here is Walters. Two strikes. Nice to turn on the inside pitch. Well, it's day 0 and 2. on an error and scored in the top of the seventh. And Miami Dade struck for two to tie it. Titans got it, the run back, or one of the runs back, and that's all they needed in the bottom. It's a Took piece. something off. Yeah. <laughs> Get clean contact on that. 0-2. Six slump on Two Saturday. Went one of three. Ball. Holds off on that one. One and two. Yeah, that was one two coming. I was thinking through inside and then a little lighter. Throw the prize ball a little bit right. here. Still just one and two. Still whatever she wants to throw, kind of thing. It's a piece, we'll send that to the gap in right center, picked up by Jewel. And runner will hold it second, so runners at first and second, still just one out. Base hit from Peary. Good piece of hitting, a uh, one-two pitch from Peary. <clears throat> Maya Wall. Wall had some good at-bats in the first right. game. Looped up in the order Moved a little bit in, in this order. one, yeah. <laughs> out in the seventh hole. Out of Miami. Complete a run here with a base hit and just one out. Walters just missed with that one a little bit. Close pitch. Chops it through, oh. base hit. They hold everybody and the bases are full of sharks. Back-to-back -back base hits, that one from Wall. And it's still just one out. Yeah, just hit that one right through, bouncing ball. Campos throws it in quick, so there's no score, but bases are now loaded for Hernandez. Hernandez has Ortega at third, Peary at second, Wall at first. Who's upstairs? didn't have much to speak of in that first game. Ball. 2-0. Oh. Oh. They continue to have some struggles locating here. You see Walters. Yeah, after a really good first inning. She kind of struggled to find the zone here. Close. Just can't quite get the strike. Needs a big pitch here. Runs it 3-0 and, oh and a, a ball away from walking in the first run. 3 balls, no strikes. Taking all the way here is For Hernandez. Sure. There it is. Always easy to throw the strike when you know That's they're right. swinging. Right. <laughs> 3-1. Three, 3-1. One. Three, one. See if she can work oh, her all way all the way back here. Really need a double play ball here. You really do. 
If you're Eastern Florida. Infield can definitely turn that. Ball four. Holds up and first run walks home. And that is Ortega scores. And the bases remain juiced. That was our new player, catcher, Maria Balzraya. From Barcelona, Spain, batting 167. Hi. Only her 11th start of the season. Has six hits and one RBI, so she's comes up here in a big spot. home they'll take the share out at first to get the two outs runner scores in the form of Peary it's two nothing so that was Raya doing her job getting a run home yeah shout took a look at home but I think the runner Peary was almost there already so took the out at first make sure you get one you have to think your offense can score two runs so you just need the outs at this point Back to the top of the order. Kadima struck out looking in the first inning. Second and third. Chance for the Sharks to put up a crooked number here. Hi. Takes a strike on the inside corner. One, one. Walters just has to get back to throwing those. <clears throat> she did a really good job in the first inning of that. 1-1 one, one to Kadima. Base hit. Kadima singles in one. And it's a two out RBI single for Kiana Kadima. Scores on the play, 3 nothing. <laughs> three hits, three runs. Helped, by, no doubt, by a couple of walks. Arms on the corners, two away. Ball. This is Kunigami. Two RBI triple in the first game. Flied out to right field in the first inning. Throw to second is not good. Nobody home to catch it. It's four nothing. As Hernandez comes home fourth of the inning. Always tough to try to throw a runner out at second when it's first and third. Chops it to left, it's through. Well, if they go for it, they will. Sending her home. And in with the run is Kadima. Big uh, two out RBI single. And now the ninth hitter of the inning, and I think this may be a curtain call here for yeah. Lucy Walters. And that Brooke Thyssen close the book. Makes the dive, but can't can't get the ball. Campos bobbles just a little bit, but the run was already coming home at that point. So yeah, Miami Dade here in the seconds almost batted around. The Titans will turn to Alana O'Brien now. O'Brien's been really good out of the bullpen for the Titans this season. She'll have to go a long way today. Yeah. Out of Mascot. Five four freshman, seven and five. Does have six saves, which ranks second in the nation. <laughs> Not really a safe opportunity here. Nope. <laughs> this is more save the game kind of a thing. <laughs> yeah, <than> 27 <laughs> appearances. Worked so hard to eke out that victory in the first game, and now you're 
in an early nightmare hole. of an inning, yeah. Titans have the bats to come back. <laughs> Definitely, and you know, typically gonna, game two is a more offensive game. Yeah, so. if you're going to concede, do it early, so you give yourself a lot of innings to come back. But you don't want to bury yourself too far. No, because like we said in the first game, it, those innings start to go by quick, so. Treader will bat it for the second time. Struck out in the first. He's the ninth batter this inning. Ball. There's a ball from Alana O'Brien. Like I said O'Brien's really been the, the one out of the bullpen that's really settled things for the Titans every time they've needed it. Straight back. She comes in with a whole different pitching look than, than either Walters or Strickland, so that's always good. Gives the hitter a different look for sure. More spin, more movement. Second inning, Miami Dade looking to level terms on this double header. Yeah, that res resiliency is showing once again. Hey! It's a strike, three and two, count running full. Three, two. Had to have been disappointing coming all the way back in the seventh to lose in the bottom of the seventh in game one, so. They bounce right back with a big inning in the second inning of game two. Popped up. It's probably going to go out of play. Oh, made the catch. Tyson with a nice catch right against the wall. So fly out. Nine, run, uh, nine batters bat. Four hits, five runs, an error, and left on. Five nothing as we go to the home half of the second. My name is Kenny Neff, and I am enrolled in the Eastern Florida State College welding program. The cost of it actually surprised me on how it wasn't nearly what I thought it would be. My instructors are probably the best instructor I could probably ask for. Your total welding throughout the day, you're probably welding four hours, five hours. When the weekend comes, I'm waiting for Monday to come back around because I love welding, just being in there, hands on, just constantly burning rods. Great position for Amy Tahara. Spotted a five-run lead as we go to the home half of the second. Takes yeah, a little got, pressure off. She got herself out of the jam in the first, and then her offense comes alive. Right. Titans left two on base in that first inning. And we'll have Ashley, Ashley Corzini. Corzini, the th designated player, for her second straight start here. Springs native takes a strike. <clears throat> a good sack bunt. A couple of sacrifices, in fact, in the first game. Play one Ball. for one, or zero for one. One, one. Had a couple of good sacrifice bunts and really had some good at bats as she's been doing off the bench. So earned her a couple of starts today. Upstairs, ball two. Two and one. Time. 
Timeout called. Didn't like the ball. Getting a new one. Good eye there by Corzini. Ahead in the count, three and one. Now she can be selective three a little one. bit. Make sure it's a pitch she can hit. And we'll take the, the walk. Lead off runner aboard. First walk issued by Tohara. Marissa shout. Had the big sacrifice fly to win it in the bottom of the seventh. On a really well hit ball to left field. Ball. Do your job. And has done that. If you're Tohara, you want to come out throwing strikes, she's come out being a little too, a little too fine. She has a five run lead to play with here. A lot of innings for the Titans to work with. It's a high strike. One and one. Large strike zone. <laughs> Definitely was there. <laughs> one one. One one to shout. Down the line foul ball. Good dive by the third baseman there. Corazzini does have one stolen base, in case you were wondering. Limited action. Bratcher will get her at bat after this. One, two. Out off the screen. Stays one and two. Baseball teams made their way out after practice today. Got some big games coming up over there. Trying to poke it through and able to do so. <laughs> so a two on, nobody out. Nice job from Shout. Infield single in a way. Coach Pettick was making no chances. Taking no chances there, making sure that Corazzini stayed at second and didn't try for third. Ball didn't get away that far. Well, after scoring five runs, now see Liz Bratcher, who is batting 500, the Orlando University high product, but that's only with two at bats, so she's one for one for the season. <laughs> Making her first start tonight. RBI situation, oh. and we'll take a strike. High four freshmen. Campos waits on deck. Nobody out here. One half of the second. Titans looking to answer a five run. Top of the second. Coach Pettick letting her swing here too. Not, not, uh, not calling for the bunt. One, one. Yep, swing one. Looking yeah, to match the inning. Yeah. Ball. Chase that one. Head in the count now. Two and one is Bratcher. Good eye there. Wasn't overly aggressive. Two, one. Through that one, two and two. That was a good pitch from Tohara. Uh, turned up the wick on it. 
Two balls, two strikes. Count even. Gets peace on it, steps on third over to second, double play. Both lead runners eliminated. Really smart play by the third baseman, Hernandez. Not only touching third, but going to second to make sure you get both. Race what could have been a rally. Good scoop. Got things started. Very tight play at second, but call was out. Bratcher will take her spot on first, but missed opportunity there. Campos. First at bat in this one. Ball. Right for two in the last one. Tohara is able to get out of this jam. She'd be pretty happy. Right, two innings in a row. Look like on board. Look like the Titans were going to score some runs, and just like that, a big defensive double play. And now Campos has got to try to keep it going. Takes strike one and two. One ball, two strikes. Adding 350. He's due here today. Ball. Holds upstairs. Runs it to two and two. Two, two. Campos, the number nine hitter, so go back to Livy Davis if she can somehow find a way on. Away, and as Good easy play. as it comes. Three unassisted, and the Titans are retired after getting two runs. A runner left, and it's 5 nothing. Sharks. The engineering technology program is a two-year AS degree. It's a lot of hands-on, a lot of industry skills, and our programs are up to date with the local demand. We talk to the local industry and ask them what do they need from our graduate. And so far, we're providing a good workforce for the Brevard area. When the student graduate from this program, actually, we have a waiting list. A lot of companies want some of our graduates yesterday. Well, the third inning will start just like the second did with Cervantes leading things off as Sharks batted nine in that five-run second to keep things going here against the second pitcher uh, in Alana O'Brien as Wal Walters was chased after a couple of walks and giving up five. Upstairs. Yeah, you just... Hope that O'Brien now can give you some some innings, some strong innings, and give the offense a chance to come back. Sprott has one for three in that first game. Should have a walk and eliminated on a fielder's choice in the first, the first out of the inning. And it seemed like the Titans were in good shape. And then bringing a bunch of hits together. Definitely, Tohara's done a good job the first two innings of getting out of jams. 
Moke. 0 and 2. One, two. 28 strikeouts this year. Ball. One and oh. two. Roll a ball. Two and two. That one looked close. I think O'Brien wanted that one. Two, Just taking two. a little walk. Shake it off. For a one-two pitch, that was a really nice pitch. Cranks it right at Campos, can't do much with it. Bounce just shy, and a leadoff runner aboard again, this time via a base hit. Yeah, caught a little more on the plate than she probably wanted on a one-two pitch, but. Hit it hard. Hit it hard, just short of Campos, so Campos couldn't make the catch. Sharks have something started here in the third. Ball. This is with the off speed, 1 0. Ortega reaching a field choice and uh, came around to score game's first run back in the second. Swing sends it to Shout and misplays it. I think the runner. And now look out, making the situation worse on the overthrow. And runners at second and third, nobody out. So Ortega reached on the error. Cervantes all the way to third. Yeah, I think we're going to see it. I think Cervantes right in front of Shout, and she kind of hesitated there, not knowing exactly what Cervantes was doing in front of her. Cost the, cost the Titans a... At least one base. Assistant coach Chuck Sardano out to talk yeah. to him now. Got to simmer it down. <laughs> second and third here and nobody out. Already trailing 5 nothing. Sharks trying to put some distance here. And that, yeah, definitely for for the Sharks, they're looking now to put up some more runs and try to get out of here after five and Not all of head them home are. with a with a split, which they would greatly appreciate. Take it, yeah. Now. If you're yeah. on the road, you'll take the split. Peary singled and scored last inning. It's a piece. And making the catch is Fison. Good pitch there, got it inside. Couldn't, she couldn't do anything with it. Big first out. <laughs> Maya Wall singled and scored. Bottom of the order really did the job in the th second inning for Miami, Miami Dade. Gets underneath it. Bratcher reels it in. They'll Runner test will the try arm. To come home. I was going to say they'll definitely they'll test try to go get third. Safe. Run scores. So sack fly for Wall. Cervantes scores. So I'm going to take it here. Marissa Shout made a nice throw. Oh, that was close. Tyson thought she had her, but I think she kind of slid into the tag, but it was close. Hey! Got a run in, 6 0 ball game. Got to make sure you get this out and not make it another run. Cena Hernandez. Walk, walked and scored, excuse me, in the bat last inning. Field sends it out of the stadium. And quickly, hole 0 and 2. Quickly 0 2. So O'Brien looks like she's starting to find her zone. Got a couple outs there and got an 0 2 count here. Uh, the error certainly helps lead to the run. Definitely. The 0 2. Hung it and it's through. <laughs> 
Good patience at the plate for Hernandez. Singles, gets an RBI. Two runs in on two hits. Yeah, Hernandez did a really good job of waiting on that pitch. Hits it right in the hole as Tyson's playing a little more toward third base because of the runner at third. Right. Titans now trailing a touchdown and an extra point. Ball. Got ahead in the count. Just some good, crafty pieces of hitting. Yeah. Balls Raya back up. First is Hernandez. Ball. 2 and 0. Oh. Two balls. Inside ball three. So now it's trying to struggle uh, locate a little bit. Need a strike taken all the way here for sure. Maria Valzariah not playing the first game. Takes a strike. RBI in the fielder's Three choice one. last time at bat. Native of Barcelona. Choosing softball over soccer. <laughs> Not a very common thing there, I can't yeah. imagine. <laughs> Spanish women, the World Cup champs. O'Brien's worked her way back. Back into this. Full count now. Three and two. And walks her. First walk issued by O'Brien. And we go back to the top of the order. Had an RBI single back in the second. Ball. Two out, two already in. Ford wants to have a little conversation. Hernandez, the runner at second. Stairs. Ball two. Two balls. There's a strike. Two and one. Three innings, three at bats <laughs> for Kadima. Struck out, singled, RBI'd, and scored in that second. Ball. Takes inside three and one. And a ball away from walking the bases That's loaded here. That's close. Mm -hmm. Three one. Heard the explanation. It's close, but a little low. There's a strike, thought she had her. Three and two, count running full on Dima. Three, two. Seventh batter in the inning here. Really can do some damage with a hit. Ball four. Ball four, base is loaded. issued by O'Brien. Hit here, busts it wide open. As Kumagani, RBI single back in the second. She 
was the last batter that Walters faced. Yeah, this offense has looked a lot, a lot different here in game two. Ooh, they're getting production that one. up and down the lineup. Yeah, assistant coach Benito Santiago uh, <laughs> almost made a nice catch there. Those of you who are baseball fans know the name. Benito Santiago, yes. Benito Santiago, San that was Padre's his father. Catcher. Okay, so he's the son. So How he's the son, that? yep. How about that? A little trivia. Oh. oh, and a hit by pitch walks the runner in, or puts the runner in. And another run scores. Just a cavalcade of errors here by the Titans in this first three innings. So that's going to be the end of O'Brien's day. Destiny Lake is going to come in. Three in in the inning. Destiny Lake, uh, the only sophomore on the pitching pitching group. Making her eighth appearance of the season, has a 3.71 ERA. Has come up in a couple of big spots for the Titans lately. Made some really big outs for them. Gonna be asked to, to try to hold it right here and, and hopefully pitch the rest of the way for the Titans. Sophomore, 5'9 out of Miami Springs, 3.71 ERA. So trying to put out some sort of a fire, as you said, solid in her last two outings. And really, being put in a tough spot here. Yeah, there's uh, no room for error right now. So she's got to come in, throw strikes, and hopefully get this last out. Walks, errors, hit by pitch. Yeah, it's funny. They're going to be a better team if you help them. Exactly. So second pitching change. Once again, Kunigama has knocked out a pitcher. <laughs> <laughs> again, <laughs> making it a habit. Strickland pitched the first game. You've used three in this one. Not much left. Kenji no. Jewell maybe can yeah, come in and be the innings be the, up in a. That would be the only other place she would probably go at this point. In a game, of, she's generally going to be putting in a lost cause situation. Yeah give up any more here it's going to be that time it's it's getting close to to that ball just one of those you got young adults dealing with all sorts of things you, you have this emotional win that you, you walk off a winner feel the second game's okay I'm, I'm ready to go and the second one we're going to knock them out and they come out and shark showed something at the end of that first game definitely and it's carried right over here into game two. Definitely playing with an edge and something to play for, you can tell. They know that their season is on the line as far as that kind of thing goes. Takes two and one. They have a tougher road ahead, so definitely need the split today and they're well on their way. Cranks it. Foul ball. Yeah, well, that, that would have been a base clear. That would have been. Treader definitely got a hold of that one. innings, batting three times at the top of the order here. Had the stats. Yeah, if 
You're the Miami Dade coach. You're liking what you see right now. Two and two. Upstairs, count runs full. And if you're late, you just want to make sure it's a strike on top. You don't want to walk three, two. Walk in another run. Make them earn it with a hit. Three runs in, make it four, possibly five coming home here. And in there, safe is Kadima. It is 10 to nothing. A two out, two RBI, double from Treader. Scorecard's getting a little busy now. Yeah. <laughs> so now they've officially batted around. Five after, runs and two straight innings. After yeah. sending nine to the plate last inning. This will be the 10th hitter of this inning. Boom. Zero. Two and a half. Not much you can say. You should no. Be They have come out angry after the way the last one For finished. For sure. Cervantes singled and scored earlier this inning. <laughs> Walked in her first time up. Hangs it. Strike. One and one. Third pitcher, Destiny Lake. One, two. Got her. Mercifully, <laughs> th that one comes to an end. Five runs come across on the benefit of four hits. Titans trail 10 0. The biggest challenge that students have, I believe, is just getting started. That's why we're here at the Writing Lab, is to help show them how to pre-plan their writing, how to get a good start, and then go back and revise. And we're here for every step of that. I just like to see that little eureka moment, that light bulb that goes on, and they're like, oh, I know how to do this now. I help with any class that involves writing. If it's language-based, we can help. All right, through th two and a half. <laughs> Jeff Radcliffe, Mike Parsons, we had a uh, pitcher's duel in the first game. This is went sideways yeah. and backwards here for the Titans in this one, giving up five runs in the second and the third inning. Giving up a lot of hits, but also what's been hurting is the errors, the walks, the hit by yeah. pitches. Yeah, it's really self-inflicted a lot of it, but um, some key hitting by Miami Dade. You know, they have really come out swinging in the second uh, game and uh, – it's led to a lot of runs. And so now the Titans have their work cut out for them to try to get back in this game. Top of the lineup, Livy Davis leading Ball. things off. Titans down 10. We go to the bottom half of the third. She was hit by a pitcher first to bat. Now if you're at Tohara, you just want to throw strikes. Uh, you got some Too cushion. You've got, <laughs> yeah. You got a Sealy Poster Peter. Yeah. Peter. <laughs> you just gotta throw strikes and get outs. This is. Ball. Yeah, coach won't be happy with that. 3-0 to start out. You don't 
you know, it's 10 nothing, but you still don't want to give the other team, you don't want to give the Titans any room right. to start thinking about coming back here. Good pitch there. Goes to three and one. <laughs> three one. Titans have had a chance in both innings. It just uh, haven't been able to score, right. and it it's just didn't get the, the just the opposite from Miami Dade. In their favor, right. <laughs> Everything's kind of worked out right. Strike two. He's trying to coax the that walk one. out of the yeah. That one on the inside corner, I think. Three, two. Davis thought it was a little more inside than it looked. Worked her way into a 3-2 count now. Fouled that off her foot. foot owie. Mm. Count here. John Davis still working on that foot. Three, two. Crosses it to the gap. Left center. Gonna roll to the fence. Should be a stand-up double. And it is. So there is an answer, at least to start from Libby Davis. Yeah, good to see her. get back to the swing that, that she's been showing all season. Rip that pitch right to the gap. All the way to the wall. Easy double for Davis. So now it's Tyson coming up. If you're the Titans, you just want to chip away. Just get one. And hitting is contagious. Yep. Tyson reached in a fielder's choice. Sacrificed over in the first inning. Eventually stranded. Ball. Head in the count, 1-0. and One ball. Tyson gave up on that pitch a little bit, thinking it was going to be on the outside. One Floated one. its way down in. Yeah. What did Gina Guerrero say in between games? Yeah, I mean, whatever it was, it worked great. Bottle <laughs> <laughs> it up. Going opposite field, foul ball. the one two upstairs not even two balls two strikes Davis in the scoring position at second good job there by Vols Raya to make sure that didn't get by her <clears throat> two two Thyssen gets a piece Gobbled up at shortstop, he'll throw to first, trying to take third on the play down low. Safe is the call. So, Dyson able to get the runner over. Once again, being aggressive. As Soon as the throw was made across the, across the field, Davis took off. One out for McKenzie Jewell. As soon as that throw goes, Davis takes off. It is close, but Davis is in there. The right hand. So now Mackenzie Jewell comes up. Whoa, Ooh. heads up. That one almost got coach. <laughs> Still has that reaction time. <laughs> If 
you're a Titan fan, you want to see the big inning, but you want to just get one or two at least. Right. Start chipping away a little bit. Let's try to extend this game as long as you can. Chop, short stop, picked up again by Treader. Davis is taken off once again. Run will score on the play. Trade the out for the run. You'll take it. Titans yeah. on the board. 10-1. For Miami Dade, that's that's a great one. You'll take that all day. Just get outs. For the Titans, you're staying aggressive, making sure you get that one run at least. Strike on Lepin. Moved the runner over with a sacrifice. Fly back in the first. Nobody came home, though. <laughs> Swing and a miss, strike two. Fooled her on that one a little bit. Strikeout for Tahara. She's been spotted a 10 1 lead. Titans get a run, and Sharks coming back up. transition from student over to employee, uh, there were so many people that I already met and made good impressions with and had good established relationships that I had no problem getting jobs. Everybody was very welcoming, letting me in. And knowing that I was a new therapist, they didn't just throw me to the walls per se. They let me work my way into things. Uh, they were always checking on me, hey, you need help with anything, everything fine. So there's always very caring people out there. You're never just set out on your own when you're new. And everybody watches your back, takes care of you. Titans down nine as we go to the top of the fourth. And Destiny Lake going in for her second inning of work. A couple of changes defensively for Shelby Pettick. Yeah, it looks like Ashley Corzini's now playing second base. Um, Mia Sanchez is at first, and Samantha Clark's now behind the plate for the Titans. So what, what's the point here in your mind? Just get, get in, some, get in a, in a yeah, game that's for, a bit of out, of out of reach, get some of the young players in? For Corazini and Mia Sanchez, for sure. Giving some young players. Uh, Sam Clark, probably the, probably the same, but that one, you know, Madison's caught a lot lately. We have four more games this week, so probably just yep. give her a little break, let yeah, Sam play a little bit. A little low. Sam's been more the DP lately. Two balls. Now it's short. At second. Oh, second. Yep. Livy Davis is still at short. Brooke Faison's still at third. 2 1. Yeah, Coach Pettick's just uh, Correct. letting some letting some players play. See what kind of conceding the situation. See what they can do. Especially when you're in the playoff race, it's a it's a long season and right. a lot of games, games later this week. So Ellsboro on the road. If you get a chance, it's always probably good to give some people a break. Got four straight row games right after yeah. this. Yeah. Give some guys a little bit of a breather, slash, let some others play. Yeah, we have two Thursday at Hillsboro, and then two at Florida Southwestern on Saturday. I'm back here on next Tuesday. Popped up. 
Fraley center. Jules got it. Also a couple freshmen at first and second now. And right. Chance to get a look for next year a little bit as well. Mia Sanchez at first. Five, six freshmen out of Riverview, Florida. Newsome high. She actually has 14 at bats and hitting 500, okay. so it'll be uh, okay. good to see her come up. <laughs> Making the most of the time. Two strikes. So, Destiny Lake, while we're talking about people, a quick two outs. There we go. <laughs> like we said at the start, uh, when she came oh, in. Wow. This is kind of what she's been doing yep. lately, so it's Let's move this game along. Good to see throwing strikes, getting outs. Wall that will be Still one, two, three. Down. Got her. Nice play by Livy Davis there. That's the Titans' defense you're accustomed to seeing, and it gets them out of the inning. So just she bobbles but doesn't panic. Sets herself, makes a good throw. Ends the run of five run innings, <laughs> most importantly. Uh, Titans still down nine as we go to the home half. So Tahara coming back out. Why not? Register now for Eastern Florida State's Summer sessions, face-to-face, -face, online, and hybrid courses are available on all four Eastern Florida campuses. It's also a good time to review admissions requirements and meet with an advisor if needed. Go to easternflorida.edu for more information. So Madison Ford is still going to take her at bat. So I'm taking it that Sam will... Either not hit or we'll hit in another spot. As I see Corazini's on deck. So possibly in Marissa Shout spot. But start with Maddie Ford. Grounded out first time plate in the second game. Titans trying to eat into a 9 1 deficit. Ball takes upstairs a ball. Tahara. Glove by Cadena over to first, but misses it. Wow. Nice glove. The throw could have been better. And the runner is aboard. Field single. Good. Oh, yeah. Woo. That ball looked like it was going to the outfield, and all of a sudden she just yeah, stabbed just, it. Just short armed to. Just yep. yep. She knew she had to kind of rush, kind of rush because Ford was running well, and that is so. Uh, Corazini's up and Sam Clark's at deck on deck. So <laughs> Corazini who walked first time up. A 
based on the double play. And it looks like Sam Formosa pinch running. At first. So yeah, Sam Formosa's pinch running for Madison Ford now at first base. Formosa has a couple stolen bases. Ball two. now. Corazzini who walked back in the second now has a 3-0 count again. The 3-0. Corazzini makes it 3-1. So Sam Clark steps in. Played in that first game. Really, really strong hitter. 318, nine doubles and a triple. 22 RBIs. She has some power, obviously. Uh, Palatka. You gotta work to get to Palatka. Yeah. <laughs> Batting 318. Sophomore. Second year with the team as well. Another two year sophomore. Big RBI opportunity here with nobody out. Clark, not bite at that. One and one. If you're Coach Pettick, this is a good spot. Clark's a pretty clutch hitter. Catcher last year. Oh. Formosa wanted to go there. Yeah, <laughs> wisely thought to go back. <laughs> I think the, the brakes were held on by Coach Pettick. <laughs> <laughs> no, <yeah. laughs> Ball didn't really get too far away from Ball's Raya. Way to be ready, two and one. Upstairs, ball three. So one pitch away from walking the bases loaded here. <laughs> if you're Clark, you're just looking for your pitch here. Might have been it, but runs it foul. Three and two. Ready returns. Clark with 22 RBIs on the season. Swung up the high pitch. <laughs> yeah, that ball. Might have been ball four, but she took a good cut at it. Straight back. Shadows are starting to come into play a little uh -huh. bit. The left side infielders and outfielders looking right into that setting sun. It's underneath it. Tracking is Kunigami. She's got it. First out of the inning. Runners hold it first and second. Uh, 
Fletcher. Hitting a double play. Ended a promising inning for the Titans last trip. Go, throw to third, and out of there. So Ford denied, caught steal it. Yeah, I know the ball beat her, but yeah, she did get the tag down. Nice tag. That was Treader with the yeah. tag. Good one. Formosa was the one that was thrown out by yep. the way, the pinch runner. Two strikes. And the hitter Bratcher. Titans got a couple aboard. A shame if they can't get one home. Two out now. Just one of those afternoons, really. <laughs> After such a great first game, two strikes. Titans have really struggled in game two here. Sends it to right. And no problem for Maya Wall on the side is retired. Hit a walk, but nobody home. It remains a 10-1 game. We go to the top of the fifth. The engineering technology program is a two-year AS degree. It's a lot of hands-on, a lot of industry skills, and our programs are up to date with the local demand. We talk to the local industry and ask them what do they need from our graduate. And so far we're providing a good workforce for the Brevard area. When the student graduate from this program, actually we have a waiting list. A lot of companies want some of our graduates yesterday. Top of the fifth, 10-1. Miami-Dade Sharks. Two five-run innings in the second and third. The benefit of some help from Eastern Florida pitchers and defenders. Some errors, some really cavalcade of everything. Hit by pitches, walks. And Tohara has done a good job of working out Just of trouble. managing it, right? Here's Destiny Lake. And they continue in here. Hernandez has an RBI in each of her first events right. today. <laughs> and scored two runs as well. <clears throat> Ball. Stands one and one. One, one. Oh, yeah. This one's going to be hard to digest if you're Shelby Petty. Yeah. And at least they came back in the bottom of the seventh to get the first one. That would have been disaster. Oh, yeah. One away. Oh, 
and two. Two strikes. Ball. Watch that one go wide. One and two. One, two. One away here. Top of the fifth. Chopper, third, over to first in time, out number two. Thyssen takes care of it. Go back to the top of the order now. This is just typical Brooke Thyssen making the play, strong throw. Now for a fourth bat, <laughs> Kiana. Destiny Lake has come in and thrown strikes now. Chalking up outs. RBI single and scored in the second. Chopped that one to third. Thyssen oh, call that. I'm gonna call that a foul ball. Nope. Good glove work. It was, yeah, it was very close, but I just, I was looking at the home ump and he raised his hands, but. Tyson's just kind of looking. I think I think she knew it was close to the line if it wasn't foul. <laughs> and there's a base hit. Make it two bases. So double for Kadena. She's having a good second game. Two for three now, scored twice. With a walk, yep. Yeah. Good piece of hitting right there. Center fielder Jewel makes sure it doesn't go all the way to the fence, but easily rolls into second base, Kadena does. Uh, double, Kunigami. Is that for a strike? Just focus on the batter. Right back to the pitcher, Lake, on the first, and that's the inning. One hit, one runner left, and it remains a 10-1 game. We go to the home half of the fifth. Titans work to do to keep this game going. The lab that EFSC Respiratory Program has is very up to date and had actually more stuff than some of the hospitals did. As a student here, you know, working with all that equipment definitely puts you at an advantage because when you're here for a semester and then you go out, you get to see it on real patients. The lab here is, I would say, above and beyond what you would need to see and what you need to know when you go out to your clinical sites. All right, Titans need two to keep the game going. The mercy rule is an eight-run lead after five. Uh, currently, the lead is nine. Got to cut that to 10-3 here to keep it going. Dave Campos, start things off. Nice outing here for Tahara. Strike. Just grounded out to first in the second inning. How's that one off? Oh no, two hole quickly. Here we go, baby, here we go. 
Here's the 0-2. Trying to get her to chase outside. Ball one. Five in the second, five in the third for the Sharks here. One in the home half of the third for the Titans. Makes us a 10-1 score line. Chopper, third base side. Hernandez has it on to first, and there is one away. Titans down to their final two outs. Back to the top of the order we go. Libby Davis had a double in the last inning. Been on base twice, hit by pitch, start the game. Davis came into the afternoon hitting 402. Take that one for a strike. Just outside, ball one. Point one. One one. Fouled off, strike two. Tahara has just kept everything in front, allowed the defense to work. Position to get her fourth win of the season here. She came in three and nine. Really found it today. Stairs, ball. Two and two. Two, two. Looking for something to hit. Here's the 2 2. Tahara. That's not it. Count runs full. Tahara work and extend this game. 3 3 2. Issued by Tahara. Now you get some of the meat of the order coming in. Thyssen. Some fields, fielder's choice in the first. Sacrificed over, unable to score. Crowded out, 6 3. Inning number three. Thyssen gets a piece, will drop it into right field. Things are cooking for the Titans now. A walk and a one out hit. Mackenzie Jewell. Oh, pressure's on the other side. Like you don't want to continue this game if you're the Sharks. I get an early ride back to Miami. Jewell will come in in three home runs. I'll make a mistake to her. Hey! Takes a strike. 0 oh 1. Chops. Shortstop, thrown to third, force out is in there, two away. Runners remain at first and second. Joel reaches on the fielder's choice. Down to Kayla Leppin. Kayla Leppin. Ball. 
bears the ball. Sanchez trying to keep this game going. Ball. Oh, and ball gets away. Runner will round third and head for home. And it's a 10-2 ball game. Runner now at third. And the Titans 60 feet away from extending this game. Eight run advantage now. Sanchez get a little bit more playing time by extending the match, the game rather. Sanchez came into the game hitting 500. <laughs> the tune of Jeopardy playing. Victory for the Titans. Can they extend it? Maybe make it interesting in the final two. One run in the third, run now in the fifth. Three Sanchez balls. with a 3 0 count. Should be taken all the way. Ball four. Runners on the corners now. Third walk issued by Tahara. Gets away. Kenji Jewell extends the game. It's 10-3. So we will have a six inning. Gonna cut into this lead a little more for a two out RBI. Ball. Two and one. Tahara starting to struggle a little bit. Gets out. Being forced to labor. Her toughest inning yet. Two one. Chop foul. Sanchez, the runner at second. Formosa looking to trade places with her here.
keeps it alive, two and two. Formosa. It's Pettit trying to spark things. That's down the line. Fair ball. That will cut it to 10 4. No. Oh, held up. Runners on the corners. Big hit for Formosa. Third, a little more interesting now, 10-3. Mosa had a 0, 0 0 batting average until that hit. Picked a good time. Hard. Strike from Tohara. Started with the one out walk. Chopper to short. On to first in time. It will stay 10 3. 6 3 on the put out. And the Titans extend the game. We go to the top of the six, down seven. The biggest challenge that students have, I believe, is just getting started. That's why we're here at the Writing Lab, is to help show them how to pre-plan their writing, how to get a good start, and then go back and revise. And we're here for every step of that. I just like to see that little eureka moment, that light bulb that goes on, and they're like, oh, I know how to do this now. I help with any class that involves writing. If it's language-based, we can help. The Titans needed two runs in that home half of the fifth. They got them. So it's a 10-3 game. There's no 8-run eight eight rule, at least not now. As we go to the top of the six for the Sharks. Could have been heading to the bus, unable to do so. Good fight being shown by the Titans here. After giving up 10 runs in the first three innings. Treader will come out here for the sixth. And one away. Brings up Cervantes with one out. Serving a couple of the younger players here in a 10-1 game. It's paid off. Showed her something. Cervantes take that one for a strike. One and one. One one. Pitcher, put away one three, two away, quickly here in the sixth. Ortega now.
ball. Down. Or maybe I missed it. Maybe I missed it. 1 0. Take has scored twice in this game. It's on a fielder's choice and an error. And came home to score both times. That kind of second and third inning for the Titans. Not much of it was earned. You're welcome. One one. Some off of that one. Two and one. Two one. Dusty Lake. Destiny Lake looking to go one, two, three. The first time. Right back at her. Back to back, one to three putouts, and that will end it for the Sharks in the top of the six. We go to the home half of the six. Titans down seven runs here at 10 3. transition from student over to employee, uh, there were so many people that I already met and made good impressions with and had good established relationships that I had no problem getting jobs. Everybody was very welcoming, letting me in. And knowing that I was a new therapist, they didn't just throw me to the walls per se. They let me work my way into things. Uh, they were always checking on me, hey, you need help with anything, everything fine. So there's always very caring people out there. You're never just set out on your own when you're new. And everybody watches your back, takes care of you. Titans down to their final two innings here as Tahara will go out for her sixth inning of work, spotting a seven run lead. We have a couple of changes to the lineup or to the defense of the Titans have happened. We'll try to keep you apprised of that. All right, Sam Clark. Slide out to left, her last time up. Hey! Shelby Pettick, a year ago, in talking with us, talked about the DNA of her teams team that's never going to give up. And they'll go down to the last strike, no matter the score. They've come back a couple Off. of times this year. <laughs> Rally caps. Ball. Two and one. Two one. Tahara deals the two one, Ball. taking all the way three and one to Sam Clark. Trying to get on base here to lead things off in the sixth. Three one. It seems right now the Eastern Florida dugout is the one that's loosey goosey down seven runs. They got somebody aboard here in the sixth. Clark with the walk. Fourth walk issued by Tahara. Bratcher will come back up. 
a double play in the second, flied out to right in the fourth. All right, pitching change here for the Sharks. As Lace Ihi. Try to finish this out. Sao Paulo, Brazil native, one and one, 5.32 ERA, a couple of saves. Not in that situation right now, 26 and a third innings pitched, 18 walks, six strikeouts. Sarah will control a little bit in her 13 appearances. So close the book now on Tahara. That's right there. Trying to finish these last two innings off here for the Sharks in a 10-3 contest. Miami Dade, some big games remaining. College of Central Florida next. A team that's in third place in the standings. So they race Eastern Florida for that final playoff spot. Two first Manatee Sarasota and four versus Santa Fe to close the season, two home, two away. Santa Fe also ahead of them in fourth place. He misses with the first. First, nobody out here. The Titans would need to string a couple of big innings together here to get themselves a chance. Three balls. Titans have gotten into the bullpen now. This provide an opening. Three, they were an out away from being run ruled. Base hit to left. Ratcher moves Clark over to second. Now Campos, an RBI opportunity. A couple of runs here, you give yourself a little hope. Shelby Pettick having some words. How to approach this situation. Two on, none out. Bottom of the six, down seven runs. Hitter Faith Campos grounded out to first, grounded out to third. First two times up in this game. It's a strike. Mihi.
Grounder to short and is through. Clark comes home to score. Now one gets away. Runners will be at second and third with nobody out. It's a 10-4 ball game. Faith Campos comes through. Single advancing on an error. And the RBI in the form of Clark. Six run contest now. Titans bats coming to life. Go to the top of the order, Libby Davis. And on deck. The big batters coming up. They'll do some damage. One in, two on, no outs. He takes a crack up the middle, base hit. One run scores. They'll hold the runner at third, an RBI for Livy Davis. Bratcher is home. And now Campos is at third. It's 10 to five. Two runs in on three hits thus far. Pressure starting to mount here. Well, no matter the outcome, win or loss, runner uh, catcher's indifference as Davis takes second. Now you got two on in scoring position with none out. One of your better hitters in Thyssen. Pops it up. Should be out number one. Not deep enough to get anybody home. Handled by Kadena. And there is one away. Mike Parsons joining your an out away from the run rule, <laughs> and all of a sudden you get two here, now it's a five run game. Well, and it's funny in the softball, baseball gods, the players in the dugout were like, where are you going? <laughs> Don't right. leave now. Yeah, they had the rally caps <laughs> on. You're good, you're good luck. <laughs> they do, they had the rally caps on, they had the cups on, they had everything in the dugout down there. Ball. Struggling to locate here is he. <laughs> Kenzie Jewell. Single in the first, had the RBI in the third. Reese on a fielder's choice in the fifth. Trying to do some big damage here with her bat. Got a piece. Strike one. Well, this gets a lot interesting if there's a single here. One, one. Yeah, and it's funny, you know, because they were on the brink and just just like Miami Dade was doing, just a hit here and a, yep, and a walk a there, and, right. and all of a sudden Jewel it's 10-5. It could be even closer here in a minute. Does have home run power, has three of them. She'll go up the middle. It is through. Two yeah. runs will try to come home. Both are safe, and the Titans have cut it to three. And that dugout right there, you see him, that dugout is alive right now. So it wasn't you. It wasn't me, so that it. is good. Because like I said, the dugout was all asking, where are you going? <laughs> so I'm happy to report it was not me. <laughs> Two RBI single from Jewel. Yeah, nice piece of hitting right back up the middle. As soon as you get it by the pitcher, it's going in the outfield. Two more runs. Campos and Davis, and it's a four spot here for the Titans. 
It's a three-run game. They are within striking distance now. It is all mighty momentum. Outside to Mia Sanchez. Coach Pettick was showing me the scorecard. She has basically played everybody now, and, and everybody's coming through, so it's always a good thing to see. Just the way you draw it up. <laughs> we'll get Sanchez in here, making a contribution. Had the walk last inning. Trying to keep this thing going. Just one away here. Pressure all on Lacey Hina. Outside, she's behind in the count, 2-0. Oh. So Tahara was struggling a little bit with location, but it is all went south since her removal. Yeah, and you kind of wonder if you're Miami Dade, do you think about bringing Amarillo in? Because you really got to stop this pretty soon. The Titans have the momentum going. You can hear them. They're loud. 2-0. The oh. Strike on the outside corner. Formosa We're on deck. 2-1. Just trying to connect some hits here. Takes outside, three and one. Big hitters count now. Yeah, you could be selected here. Struggling to locate. Yeah. First, make sure it's a good strike. Second, make sure it's something you can hit. Sharks are busy in the bullpen now. Yep. Four runs in, one away. Six runs in the last two innings to get back in it. Hangs it, and she walks. Runners at first and second. Sam Formosa coming up now. Single. An infield single out before that, so. Or that might have been head. Oh, Ford. The last at bat had a single. Get another one here, maybe score another run. Just one out. Pitch strike. Got that pitch on the outside. Got that call. Yeah, and that's... Sun going down, lights coming up. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Look at figure, you had to get three or four here to give yourself a chance in the seventh. Yeah, for sure. Anything more here is gravy. The whole thing is, is good news for Coach Pettick. The team did not give up. When it's 10-0, it's very hard, 10-1. Very hard to stay in the game, and, the, and these guys did that. They've worked their way back in it. You learn a little something about your players. One, two. No quit. A hit here, to assume a pitching change is coming. Outside, ball two. Even two balls, two strikes. Jewel at second. Sanchez, <laughs> excuse me, at first. Yeah, and you know. The outputs come from everybody up and down the lineup, which is good. You know, Formosa having a good afternoon. Upstairs, good eye. runs three and two. Don't help her out here. Make sure it's a strike. Make it your pitch. With Corzini on deck. Right Rude back up the middle. Short. Runner comes down to score. It is 10 8. What Jewel a hit. Cuts it to two. Big hit for Formosa. What a full count. Big part of the game. Sam Formosa comes through with a big hit. We're going to see it again here. Right back up the middle once again. That's. Jewel running around third, never hesitates, scores the run. And we have a ball game now, 10 to eight. 
There they are in the dugout with the rally caps on. And the Titans have now put a five run inning of their own up. And now we've got the change. And as you said. Yeah. Bring Tahara back in? Is that what I'm saying? Oh, that is what you're saying. You can well, come back into the game? Yeah, you can come okay. in and out. Um, like you said, she is the workhorse of the staff. So they probably had a talk with her, she's calmed getting, her down. She's getting tired. All right, an innings eater. Seven runs and two innings here for the Titans to make this a winnable game now. now this Titans team showing us some something. Yeah, for sure. And like I said, it's not even you know the, the usual suspects. It's a, it's everybody. Right. Everybody on that on that team. Everybody on the bench has been doing it now. So the lead was 10-1. In fact, 10 nothing at one point. Yeah. Titans have crawled all the way back to cut it to 10-8. Borazzini, ninth batter to hit this inning. Runners at first and second, still just one out. Cracks it to the gap in left center. Big catch oh. made, and now we'll have to double back. Oh! And a lifeline what a catch. is the throw was not as good. No, the, the throw was way off, but the catch was amazing. Looked like they might get another run. Instead, a big second out. Huge play by the left fielder right there. For the second time this inning, here's Sam Clark. So is that Kunigama? Yeah. That's a great play in left field. So now Sam Clark comes up, two outs, trying to get another run and make this a real ball game. Ten, But 10-8, ten still alive. You are an out away from being mercy ruled. Came back with two in the fifth. Yeah, I was seriously talking to Coach about, you know, we're going to do the interview after the last out. Right. <laughs> next thing you know, it's 10-8. <laughs> <laughs> <It's a> threatener. <laughs> okay. He's oh given two. that pitch a couple times in the last couple batters, so, yeah, you got to be careful on that outside. 10-8's good. 10-9 would be even two better. Strikes. Clark's kind of hitter you want up in this spot. Has come up with big hits in the past for the Titans. Outside, ball one. One, two. Swing and a miss. And a tag. And that will do it. But five runs come across on four hits. Titans cut it to two. Big inning. We go to the top of the seventh. 10-8. Build a successful career with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. You can choose from nearly 25 tracks in today's top job fields of business, healthcare, and computer technologies, with classes tailored to meet your needs on campus and online. A bright future awaits you with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. To learn more, visit easternflorida.edu slash go slash bachelors. An incredible comeback here for the Titans. You see seven runs in the last two innings, racing a 10-1 deficit. 
Again, an out away from being mercy ruled, and they've come to life. All the little buttons that Shelby Pettick has punched, putting in some of the young, youngsters to see what they got, they have proven. Yeah, They're Destiny ready for the Lake's time. been really good. She's come in and settled things down, getting outs, allowing the offense to go back to work. Top of the seventh. Do not want to concede any runs here for sure as Dana Peary steps in. Six hole hitter. Fly out to left last time up. Oh, it's been a long wait here for the lake. Off speed. Side of ball. Oh, the energy in this building right now. Blasts it. Gap, left center. Oh, and unable to catch it. Digging in for a triple here. Just ahead of the tag. Lead off triple, that's not what you want. No, that was hit really well. Right in the gap. Campos and Jewel both on the run. Can't quite glove it. Good job by Perry on the run the whole way, running to third. Uh, you run, you, you pull out seven runs and two innings, you, you run out of steam a little bit. Take the foot off the pedal defensively. They've got a ride. Yeah. So Lake's got a work cut out for her, and he's tried to strand this runner at third now. Ball. Wall. And is even in the count one and one. Wall's had a good day. Chopper to short. Or go home. home. They get her. Out. What a play by the shortstop, Sam Formosa. That was a great play. Could be game saving, depending on how the bottom of the seventh works out. Heads up play. Another sophomore, Sam Formosa, doesn't get to play as much, but heads up play, <laughs> throwing home. Good tag by Sam Clark. Who is cheering as soon as she makes the tag. Ah, that's great. <laughs> One away, and most importantly now, that triple's been erased. Bit of a miscue there. Lissette Sosa coming up. Now for Miami Dade. Lissette Sosa. 5-1 freshman from Santiago, Dominican Republic. Two hits and six at bats. This team's going to the, the benches here. Strike two. Yeah, Destiny Lake just continues to fill the strike zone. She's really done a great job in helping this comeback. Good swing to stay alive there by Sosa. 0 oh and 2. Well, if you stuck around with us, you're seeing a heck of a game. Right. <laughs> Shouldn't have left. <laughs> Little dribbler to first. Take it herself. Runner moves to second, but there are now two away. Sanchez making the good play at first. Maria fouls Raya. So now two outs. Hey. A strike. Hey. 
Gabriela Luz back in the game here now. Saw her in the first game. Runner in scoring position here. Need some insurance. Ball, take that one, a ball. One and one. Ah, it is just chock full of energy in that yeah. dugout. Nice pitch. One and two. Titans looking to get out of the inning here. And after the leadoff triple. Ball, two strikes. Makes the ball, two and two. Well placed. Lake was hoping. But that one was a little more outside. Than the last one. Good pitch, though, from her. Here's the 2 2. Lose will take her base on the hit by pitch. Unfortunate. And, will continue. There. and now you're back to the top of the order, though. You've got to be really careful. Yeah, Kadena's had a big, big game. Ground ball here would be good. I single in the second. And the double in the fifth. Yep. Hey! Getting ahead early. Like does. Kadima, 0 1. Cracks it. Right to left. Campos Where is there. Campos makes, the, makes out. the put out. And the and the bench is out and they're celebrating now. Two for the tie, three for the win. When do we come back? Titans down 10-8. We go to the bottom of the seventh. The lab that EFSC respiratory program has is very up to date and had actually more stuff than some of the hospitals did. As a student here, you know, working with all that equipment definitely puts you at an advantage because when you're here for a semester and then you go out, you get to see it on real patients. The lab here is, I would say, above and beyond what you would need to see and what you need to know when you go out to your clinical sites. Well, bottom of the seventh. Titans have cut it to two after trailing 10 nothing at one point in this game, 10-1. And then in the fifth, a couple of Run scored to stave off the mercy rule, and then they exploded for five in the sixth. They put themselves in position to complete this comeback. Bratcher will start things off. And then Campos, and then the top of the order. Bratcher last time up, singled, went out, came around to score in that big five run. Sixth inning. Get that leadoff runner oh. on, let's see here. Campos on deck, trying to get it back to Libby Davis and Brooke Thyssen at the top of the order. Sets up good if you can get some people aboard. Hey! Hara gets a strike. So in one of those. Put out the fire here after those five runs. And I was going to say one of those softball things. 1-1. One, one. Tohara would be in line for the win and the save in this kind of a situation. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> right, yep, save situation now. The win and the save. Chopper gobbled up by Hernandez on the first. There's one out. Put in play. 5-3, now Campos. Mm -hmm. 
See if Campos can keep things going here. Two RBI single last inning. Came around to score. Ball. Upstairs, ball one. it in for a base hit. Good backup by the catcher there. Campos is looking to go to second, throw over first baseman, but the catcher was right there. Brings a tying run to the plate. Good piece of hitting right there from Faith Campos. Hits it to right field. I said good play by the catcher. If that gets by, Campos is on her way to second. But here we go, top of the order, Livy Davis. RBI, stole the base, came around to score. Hey! Take that one for a strike. Run at first is Campos. 34 stolen bases, file that away. Do you, do you go for it here? Put yourself in position. Or do you risk the out? Oh, no, do you send her to stay out of the level? Yeah, part? I was just thinking, you know, she has 34 stolen bases, so we haven't really been running a whole lot today. But if you get caught, you take the bat All out right. of the hands. Yeah. The decisions one. you got to make if you're Shelby Pettit. Yeah, exactly. Now that you're back in it, <laughs> you don't want to run yourself out of it. Fly ball, right field, grabbing it is Wall, trying to get into second, safe. Good speed Woo. from Campos there. And we're down to the final out though. Brooke Thyssen. You know, you could say nobody better. Another two year sophomore, done a lot of big things for the Titans over two years. One of the leaders on the team. Trying to get to the home run pop of Mackenzie Jewell to get on base here. Tyson, a very smart hitter. Credit to Tahara for coming back in and settling this yeah. down. Yeah, she really has. I guess in that respect, she's saving her own game. Yeah. She wants this win. <laughs> But this part of the lineup's gonna make her work for that last out. Thyssen and then Jewel. It's the 1-0 to Thyssen. Takes a rip, one and one. Two away here. End of the final out. Very impressive comeback when they were left for dead. Is that his momentum is going to Hillsboro? Yeah, yes, it's been a fun game to watch. Not over yet, but. Two balls and a strike. It's been an entertaining two games. And a lot of momentum now heading into the weekend. 2-1. Eight runs is going to be enough to win a game. Lesson learned. Don't spot a team ten. Yeah. Ball. Upstairs, ball three. So we should get a pitch to hit. Yeah, definitely. Like we've been saying, this is the this is the count. This is the hitter's count. Nice and looks cool, calm, and collected. Ready for that. Balls in a strike to Thyssen. Takes in a strike. Count runs full. Titans down to the final strike now. Off speed, good pitch. Wasn't too good so that Thyssen would swing. Good enough to get over the plate. Full count, two outs.
Thyssen cracks it to short. Thrown on to first in time, and the game is over. 10-8 the final on the ground out from Thyssen. But what battle shown by the Titans there. Trailing 10-0, came back, lost 10-8. We'll be back, wrap this baby up as the Titans get the split. My name is Kenny Neff, and I am enrolled in the Eastern Florida State College welding program. The cost of it actually surprised me on how it wasn't nearly what I thought it would be. My instructors are probably the best instructor I could probably ask for. Your total welding throughout the day, you're probably welding four hours, five hours. And when the weekend comes, I'm waiting for Monday to come back around because I love welding, just being in there, hands on, just constantly burning rods. The engineering technology program is a two-year AS degree. It's a lot of hands-on, a lot of industry skills, and our programs are up to date with the local demand. We talk to the local industry and ask them what do they need from our graduate. And so far we're providing a good workforce for the Brevard area. When the student graduate from this program, actually we have a waiting list. A lot of companies want some of our graduates yesterday. Titans two runs shy of completing a sweep. Matter of fact, they needed three. Lose the second game of this doubleheader, 10 8 after winning 3 2 in the opener as night descends here on the Space Coast. But a team that was down 10 to nothing in the top of the third came back with a one run in the, in the third to make it 10 1. They staved off the mercy rule in the sixth inning with two runs, or fifth, fifth inning, and then five more in the sixth. And then just couldn't play to any runs as the comeback fell just short. But uh, if you're Shelby Pettick, you are really pleased with the effort of this team to get back in it and keep fighting. That will show a lot going into the next one. Here is Mike Parsons with Shelby Pettick. Well, I'm here with head coach Shelby Pettick. And coach, first of all, let's... Talk about a split. It's always good to get a split against a tough team like Miami-Dade. Yeah, Miami-Dade's been really hot, probably the hottest team in the state right now. They were 7-3 and three coming into this. We didn't play our best game. So if we're able to win and be competitive and we're not hitting well, not pitching well, that's it shows a lot about our team. Game one, big outing from Hannah Strickland. Big hit from Mar Marissa Shout. I mean, just an all-around great uh, performance from you guys. Yeah, absolutely. That just goes to show what happens when you can throw strikes, uh, get ahead in the count and stay selective and disciplined at the plate. Talk about Marissa. I mean, sophomore, two years here, and, and just comes up in a big spot and gives you exactly what we need. She has a thing for theatrics. She had a big TV game last year. I don't know if you remember, but against Miami-Dade, she had a walk RBI to help us win it last year, too, and that's kind of what we talked about after the game was, um, for some reason, she performs well on, on, on the big lights. And then game two, looked like we might get run ruled, but the girls come back and make it a real game. Yeah, they did. They showed a lot of resolve. Um, a lot of different players played today. I think everybody contributed in one way or another. Um, and that just goes to show what type of team we are, the resolve that we have, um, even when we don't play our best. And finally, just talk about now. It's a big week. You have a couple big games coming up. Talk about fr Thursday and Saturday now. Yeah, absolutely. We're in control of our own destiny. Um, if we continue to throw strikes often, um, attack the zone, stay disciplined, it should be a very good week for us. We're facing some adversity, but who isn't this late in the season? And you have to talk about Destiny Lake. Great outing from her to, to keep us in the game. Yeah, I think Destiny is kind of going under the radar, but that's her third really solid performance in a row from her. So we're very fortunate she kept us in the game today. And finally, what does this kind of a win and game like this kind of do for the momentum as we head into the stretch run? Yeah, I think it shows that we can win with anybody. Um, we can do it with a lot of different pieces and a lot of different players today stepped up 
when we really needed them the most. So it builds our confidence, especially going into this last playoff push uh, the last week and a half here. Well, that's Coach Shelby Pettick. Back to you, Jeff. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Coach Pettick. As the Titans earn the split, so where do they sit? As Shelby Pettick said, we're controlling our own destiny. Now 17-17 and 17 in the Citrus Conference standings puts them at fifth place. Miami-Dade holds serve by winning one of these two, 16-19-1. and one. Titans, as Shelby Pettick mentioned, really big week uh, with – uh, a number of big games. You've got two, two at Hillsborough and then two at Florida Southwestern. Two, uh, that Florida Southwestern game is going to be tough, but they've gotten a win against them before. Two against Daytona State here at home to close out the home conference season. And then two at uh, Manatee, Manatee Sarasota, who's below them in the standing. So an opportunity, should they just win enough, um, should be enough to hold Miami-Dade back. Miami-Dade's got a really tough schedule. College of Central Florida, the third place team, two on the way. Then San, uh, Manatee, Sarasota, which is a little further down the standings. Then four with Santa Fe, two home, two away. Santa Fe, the fourth place team. So a lot of work uh, set up now for Gina de Guero. And really, we're up against it here late on. They thought they were cruising to a 10-1 uh, victory. Titans scored uh, two to keep it alive, then five in the eighth and couldn't come across as the comeback just fell short in the second. But they did scratch out that victory 3-2 in the first to earn them the split here. So the Titans, eight to play. Playoffs hopefully uh, on the way. So we've got baseball for you next week. Titans trying to stay alive there. As... Eastern Florida, much better shape on this softball diamond. Could have been better if they had gotten the sweep, but there's still games to play, and the Titans have shown a lot, as Shelby Pettick said, resolve to keep fighting and learn something from some of those younger players. So uh, you, you, you certainly take that away. You can learn from losses. You can take positives from losses in that. Should it, what, was it 10-1? Maybe you don't take much from that and you burn the film. 10-8, you look at the comeback there. So that will do it. Titans split the doubleheader with Miami Dade here on Eastern uh, or on WEFS. 10 uh, 8, the final in the nightcap after a 3 2 win in the first game. Thanks to our entire crew. For Mike Parsons, my partner, Brian Foster, our producer, Roger Hayward, our director, and the rest of the gang here at WEFS. I'm Jeff Radcliffe saying so long from Melbourne. Titans split the doubleheader with Miami Dade. See you baseball next week. Good night. I'm an asthmatic myself and have breathing problems and had to suffer through being a child and through adulthood. And, you know, it's well maintained myself through my pulmonologists and being able to help other people breathe easier and to recognize signs and symptoms and be able to teach them beyond what a pulmonologist can because we're more trained in, you know, they have a broader spectrum of what they cover where we're more narrow focused on it. It allows me to actually take care of myself better and be able to instruct my patients to manage their asthmatic problems as well. If somebody was asking me about Eastern Florida Respiratory Care Program, I would highly recommend it. It's a great, great program. I came out of the automotive racing industry and had no experience whatsoever in the medical field and the program with the support courses leading in gave me all the tools and necessary skills to become a good respiratory therapist in the field. I would highly recommend it. As far as I know, we are the only technical welding program in Brevard County. On the one year degree, you end up taking multiple AWS certifications and we hold you to those standards. So by the time you graduate, go to work for somebody, you've already passed that test. Brevard County has a lot of industry in the welding trade. So we have Space Center, we have a lot of companies around here that support the Space Center. It starts working out, the companies will start looking back at school and say, hey, yeah, I like what they're producing, he's helping me out. And then they start 
calling more and more and make one heck of a program at this school where everybody wants to come here and we want to put them to work. You know, my goal always is, you know, try to be the best at whatever you do. Build a successful career with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. You can choose from nearly 25 tracks in today's top job fields of business, healthcare, and computer technologies, with classes tailored to meet your needs on campus and online. A bright future awaits you with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. To learn more, visit easternflorida.edu slash go slash bachelors. When it comes to a mentorship and the decisions it helped me create, I would say my mentors had a very big impact on my, my current goals and my future goals. Because when I came to EFSC, I did not really have a planned path. It was more of a go day by day and see what would interest me or if I would complete my degree. And then as I started getting mentored, as I started getting that advice, started listening to professionals and being introduced to different professions more in depth, that gave me the opportunity really to see where I wanted to go and what I wanted to do. I love working on computers, I like programming, and so I started taking more computer-oriented classes. I know my goals, my future goals with the U.S. Army, getting a career in computer analytics, and to make steps to that goal, I started with the Bachelor's in Cybersecurity program, which I'll hopefully complete in 2025.